Hallelujah. Praise the Almighty Abba, Yahweh the Redeemer of Israel. Through the power of His living Torah, we greet you all that have joined us on this live broadcast on this Shabbat, the Shabbaton. As we gather here in the Bayans, Hamikdash, the house where He has poured out His Ruach. His name is sealed in the shot, the bosom of the heart of Yisrael. And we give great praises and honor unto him for his excellent works. For his ill doth the power of his testimony is of great strength and of great excellence. And for Yisrael as a nation, that is the only thing we have is his testimony. They are the components that will say, prove it. It is already proven. It has been tested. It has been tried in my bosom. Nasa. So it has been refined to the point that nothing shall remove me away from the power of his Eda. Sickness, death, whatever impediment it is, I will not turn away from his Torah. I will not be persuaded by men in their juvenile approach to correct, to show me. I will not allow that, Yisrael. And for the witness of his strong men, and the Torah talks about great men as well. Not all are men of Gadol, men of your strength, men of Yah's important. He talks about the great men. And he identifies the character of the great men. And then he talks about those kinds of men that are subject and submissive and faithful. But not all are great men. Not all know how to serve the kingdom, the Melchutz, the kingdom of the sovereign one. That is the only kingdom that has sovereign. And that simply implies that it answers to no other kingdom. Neither does it answer to the kingdom of Nahash, whereby this pulsating dry, in the minds, the Laba of Yisrael, to defy, to denounce, to resist, and literally battle against his commandments, the mitzvah. And his mitzvah consists of the wisdom of his mind. This is the code. Of the wisdom of the mind of Almighty Yah. Can one express unto me scientists. Through their scientific expression. Which is based upon nothing. Will try to express unto us the very dynamics of his power in creation. Yet they have not proven one damn thing. And yet the power of his spoken word, Yisrael, all things that exist, came forth out of the power of his kul, him. And his voice expressed who he is. For his word is his bond between Yisrael and his kingdom. And so he had to send us manna or Man, that is how mana is properly enunciated in the Hebraic expression or the Ugaritic. It is man, M A N. Quite surprising, isn't it? I want to reveal unto us the man and the nourishment of Yisrael. We have allowed the very tenets of Yah's truth to be eroded from our minds by 
the spirit of Nahash. It is a spirit that bewitches the mind, that it draws us into uh, delusions and predisposition as to uh, my ways are right, my thoughts are right, my actions are right. And what I do, uh, I give credence unto that, but the Torah doesn't give credence unto our ways because all other ways of a man, they are pure. They're right in his own sight. But what Yah does, he ponders or he weighs the ruach of a man. And he measure out the measure unto a man that is significant for him to grow, to progress, uh, that he become a vital part uh, of the very kingdom work that he has commanded uh, unto man uh, through the dispensing uh, of the power of the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. To say it simply, uh, it is through the eyes of Yahshua that are in, the eyes uh, of mental, spiritual wisdom, uh, whereby we as a nation that we look out of those eyes uh, and then we can see the fullness uh, of the operation of the kingdom of Almighty Yah. And because we allow Nahash, this mind that bewitch us, this mind that gives credence unto our own carnal mind. And we know that the carnal mind, there is a hatred for Yah. Yeah. To be carnal minded uh, is enmity, there is an enmity uh, with Yah. Because the carnal mind, first of all, uh, it is not subject unto the Torah of Yah. And never indeed can it be. But it is always subject unto the spirit of uh, Nahash. The mind that rises up. The mind that bewitch us that we will not obey the truth. There is a difference when one uh, hears the truth. Uh, but when one shemach. There's a faithfulness of loyalty uh, to obey what Yah commands. And one does that with enthusiasm. There is uh, an enthusiastic expression uh, from the ponim, the facial expression from the eyes up. You can tell a lot about a man. You don't have to speak with him. You watch his eyes, his mouth. You can tell a lot about an individual. Uh, when you look at that, I can. You can tell one's traits, one's dislikes, one's likes, one's disapproval, one's self grandizing arrogance. You can tell all of that because you peer to the very spirit of a man. And so his nature is revealed. And that is why we must have the mind, the eye in the eyes of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because the spirit of Nahash will cause us to disavow our commitments unto Yah. And then we began to pursue those things that have been constructed in our own minds that bring death. It brings no fulfillment. It brings no excitement. It brings no hafiz that you take pleasure in doing that. It doesn't please you because the spirit of Nahash, this, uh, this bewitching power, moves you from one space or one place unto another, whereby once you get to that extreme, you cannot go back. For example, there are those that operate in their emotions uh, and when they try to get right, when they try to reverse the activities uh, of their actions, they cannot do it. They can't even turn away from their activities uh, because it is the power of uh, Nahash. When he said unto Hannah, to, uh, to Ava, Hava, when he said unto Eve, uh, he says, the day that you defy Yah, he knows that you can eat of every tree. Did he not say that? She said every tree except that one that defies the mind of Yah. 
that supersedes the mind of Yahweh, one elevates themselves. Listen, Yisrael. Anytime you elevate yourself above Torah, above the commandments, to love Yahweh all, to love your neighbor as yourself, that is Nahash. It is a shadim, a demonic power of such force that it removes you so far from Yah that there is no uh, shuba. Teshuva, you can't repent. You try, but you cannot get it right. You cannot remove yourself from that. Is there an example where we can see this in Bereshit? Once she heard the voice of Nahash, she proceeded to enact upon those guiding principles of Nahash. Was Nahash that demonic spirit? began to speak to our minds, we began to move in that direction. And you don't revert your activities. You proceed that way. And the more you proceed, it begins to produce death. We saw that with Adom and Hava. That death came out of their loins. And that which was Sadiq, and that which was uh, righteous and brought the, the offering of pleasure unto Yah, rose up a spirit that was in defiance. And it destroyed that and the blood cried out. We don't realize that we impel Yahshua HaMashiach afresh. When he points out the spirit of Nahash, there must be Teshuvah. We must repent. We must repent. Yeah. We must acknowledge and recognize that this is a deplorable thing and a state of mind that is trying to toy and wrestle with Yah. And one must shoot, turn around quickly and proceed in the path or the way of Torah. And once one began to proceed in the way of Torah, it begins to break down the power of the chains of uh, Nahash. It was not that Hashatan entered into her. He spoke out of his spirit comes Nahash. And out of your mind comes the nature of uh, Nahash. It is a spirit that is, uh, that is bewitched. It is one that will lie to oneself. You ever done that? Yes, true. We literally lie to ourselves. Yes, yes. And you know that you are lying to you. Hallelujah. But yet you speak shikha lies uh, that, that, that dismantle, destroy, break down uh, the very building blocks uh, of strength, of imuna. And the direction of Almighty Yah through the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must eat the manna. We must be nourished by the man. The man. The M-A-N. We must be nourished by the manna. The man. It is enunciated man. M-A-N. And what derives in our vernacular... As far as we speak that, that we call this man or that man. And no one wants to hear. That's why this Nahash says, you need no man. It makes no difference whether you all buy the truth or not today. It makes no difference whether it excites your buzama. Not at all. I will declare the council of Yah and the whole council for this moment. That which is whole, I will declare that. And that which is whole, it is skull, it is the completeness of what that is needed in that man that we may eat of that bread and we may become strong. We may have the ooze of Yah, the strength of what? Not only our physical strength, man, but also the strength of the nurturing of the testimony of Yah that dwells in the love, that dwells in the heart of man. And when he stands erect, all nations shall know 
who he is. And that's a fact. I want to regress for a moment and read a couple of verses quickly. It says in the book of Juliana, Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, Yokohan said, And I stood upon the sand of the arm of the sea, or the masses of the people. He says, And I saw this Nahash, I saw this spirit rise up against Yah. I saw this nature rise up. I saw it uh, Saham. I saw that uh, th this powerful entity uh, of the mind of man, uh, I saw it rise up out of the sea, out of the masses, out of the populace. We have seen that in this election here in the United States uh, of America. We see the components or those uh, that are firmly conservatives uh, and they are nothing but uh, repulsive crats, uh, just like the demon crats, uh, no different at all. Uh, and we see the very virile, uh, vile uh, aura that rises out of uh, a wicked people. Uh, that think that it will be one that is as wicked as them uh, constitute their legitimacy uh, and the power of their greatness. There is only one that constitutes the power of the greatness of a man. And that's Almighty Yahweh. And it's one thing that Nahash does. It breaks him down uh, and reduces him down uh, that he is an effeminate feeble thing that has no strength of power he is not an ish because he doesn't bear the masculinity of an ish and so he is reduced to something that is not even worth a damn thing I saw the spirit rise up he had seven heads and we have, as we spoke on the seven things uh, that Yah hates, a forward mouth. A mouth that speaks, and that mouth that speaks, uh, it comes by the spirit of Nahash. When it sows this kind of animosity and hatred among Israel, yeah, that is Nahash. It is a death stroke upon you. It is a mark, Yisra'ah. It is the oath. It is a distinguished mark of Yah in your mind. And Yah has marked your mind with that oath. And so he arose with the seven spirits to wrestle against the seven Ruachim of Omari, Yah, the spirit of wisdom. Even the wisdom of Yah doesn't speak in our minds. One rose up to speak against the Ruach of understanding, of Bina, of Bin. The Ruach of Da'at, of the knowledge of Yah. The Ruach of the Yare, the fear of Yah. And so who fear Yah today? You know that that is Nahash when there is no fear of Yah. And we persist in activities that are, that, that are damning our nephesh into hell. You know something is twisted and bewildered in your mind. Has seduced you under a law of the flesh that hates Yah. And we know what the fruit of the flesh is. And the fruit of the Ruach of Yah. It is steeped in Yah's hava, in Yah's love. It is kindness. It is gentleness. And a beast is not gentle when a beast rise up. You don't want to intimidate that nearly 1,600 pound bull over there that we have. You don't want to interfere with that beast of a thing uh, when it's preparing uh, to produce other siblings of its kind. And so it is with the spirit of Nahash. You don't want to interfere. Go from the presence of a shrill or a foolish individual. When you realize that that individual is foolish and stupid. Because you will contaminate yourself. Just being in their presence. And as that bull nothing abates it. Nothing stops it. Nothing impedes it. The power of Nahash, even the Torah of Yah, 
Even your speaking uh, to us does not uh, interfere with that spirit. You had spoken the command and the woman would awake from that command. The woman is the chamber of birth. She is the one that brings forth the fertilization, the DNA and the important values in the zira. That's what she represents. That's what the woman uh, Yisraya represents. Uh, that the contents of Torah, that the ordinance and the statutes of Yah, they are in the bosom of, of, of that woman. Uh, and she brings forth that. She exercises in that. And her children exercise uh, in the same thing. Uh, look at the generation of our children. Uh, they're given to hell, to darkness. Uh, they're wicked. They don't love Yah. Your sons and your daughters. And so the spirit of Nahash, it bewitches and destroys. It rises up out of the multitude of the people. And that's why there is such a fellowship among the wicked. The Russia, when that spirit exercises, it says that this mind will defy the ordinance of Almighty Yahweh. And we know that the Rasha, the wicked, uh, is a criminal against Torah. When Yah uses the word not Rashes, but Rasha, it says you're guilty. You are damned into the bias of darkness of hell uh, because you have no restraints, there is no constraints. Uh, the Ruach HaChodash, it leads us, not it, but the Ruach, the mind of God, the Ruach, the spirit of His life in us. It leads us into all truth. It guides us in the principles of Yah. It doesn't guide us in the spirit of Nahash, of defiance and disobedience that brings death that our minds are separated from Torah. There is no delight, no love to hear the Torah. There is no excitement about Yah. Because sin has finished its course in our minds. And when sin finishes its course, it brings forth death. We began to mavet, we began to die prematurely. Our inspiration, our compassion for Yah has no excitement. Our voice doesn't resonate the very appreciative power of Almighty Yah that He calls us to breathe today. And so we find ourselves, our thoughts removed from him, uh, our activities, uh, we're not concerned whether he judge our actions or, or our activities uh, because we frankly do not give a damn. And so this Nahash rise up among the nations of the people. I saw this defiance of this anti hamashiach spirit. We despise the death of Yahshua. We despise him bearing our sins. Because he is not our delight. That is what anti Hamashiach, the spirit, is this Nahash. It is a spirit that is anti against Yahshua. It gives no relevance to his place. So... That mind doesn't to Yah for the power of uh, his Hamashiach. The one that delivered us and brought us uh, out of the bondage and the shackles of darkness. Uh, our minds under the power and the control of Nahash. Uh, whereby we can offer up an offering of uh, Toda unto Yah with excellence. Yeah. Yet yeah, when Nahash commands you to offer up the offering of laughter, folly and foolishness, you do it with great uh, gleefulness. You do it with great delight, but when it's time to offer up that unto Yah, you have no excitement about that. When the harsh tells you to be foolish, be not given too much foolishness. What die ye before your time? You love to give your mind over to much foolishness and laughter and frivolity and sporting that doesn't produce a damn thing at all. And so he saw this massive spirit rise up from among the people. It had these seven spirits that Yah hates. 
There are seven things that Yah hates. One, the seventh one is an abomination. It is to a bar. It is so detestable. It is so vile. It is like the nira, the rag of a minister woman. And this is how minds collect such filth and such vileness and we retain it. Who saved minister rags? What woman saved them? And that's what we draw on the nira, the filthiness. Of Nahash. Remember some of the most vilest of things. We judge our ark and our hope by some of the most immature things that transpired 50 years ago. Just like the weight fields and the hat fields. The hat fields hated the weight fields. Mom and daddy hated and their children and their children and their children, 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 their children, 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 children. They all hated the hat fields. And they didn't even know why they hated the Hatfield. Because it was a spirit of Nahash. I hate my Ark and don't even know why I hate him. I despise the presence of my Ahota and don't even know. Uh, has my Ark done something to me that was so, uh, that, that was so uh, ill repute? That it has grown into this behemoth of Nahash. Something that is so vile uh, that even we can't break ourselves free from the shackle. It is almost like a man on crack. He has tried every alternative and every intervention. He cannot uh, alleviate that crave uh, and the greed and the loss. Uh, and you cannot make yourself free. Hallelujah. Only you're sure when the power of the testimony Hallelujah. becomes the viable staple of your life. Uh, when it becomes the most important thing in your life, uh, then only can you be made free. Because that's the power of truth. Uh, that testimony. He saw him rise about to see heaven, seven and ten horns. Uh, and his ten crowns were kingdom powers uh, to war against uh, the ten tribes of Yisraya. And he presented himself uh, as though that uh, he had two horns as well uh, that uh, represents the strength uh, of Yehuda, the strength of a kingdom, Yisraya, his kerap. That represents strength and power. That's why I despise those that identify with what they call Hebrew Israelites only in this nation. And they reject a man from another continent. They are liars uh, and they are corrupt men. They don't know who a Hebrew is. Because Yah said he scattered them to the countries, uh, to the Iraq, uh, to the four corners of the earth. Uh, and when they went, there were 70 that went down uh, into Misra or the Miri. Uh, and yet there were 4 million that came out. Uh, And they married who, what kind of wife did Yosef have? What was the wife of Yosef? It is right. And these beasts of this nida, this filthy spirit, they're bastards. They reject Israel. They don't know because the prince, if the princes of this world had known, whom Yahshua was, they would have never impaled him. You were identified true Hebrew by the color of his skin. In my natural family, we had one extreme of color to the other. From the blackest to the lightest. From the curliest of our locks until the very tightness of the locks in one's hair. I've seen them from the creamies of the whitest looking skin to the blackest of the tar. And you tell me, you got to ask one where you were born to know if they are of Israel. You are a damn it is the power of Yah's Ruach. It is the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. You got these weak siblings today that are preaching these lies and they have not examined it. They become enthusiastic because what they see on YouTube and Dollar Tube. They're liars. I don't back down. Is one thing about the word Ibram, Hebrew. It means from beyond. 
And so a true Hebrew, he doesn't look, he acts as though he's from beyond. He's beyond the very concept of the mind of man. He's beyond the superlatives to describe him, his demeanor. His walk is not black man's walk. His talk is beyond the stratosphere of man to comprehend. His boldness is beyond that. Just like Yah said that all the nations shall know that you are my people by the riches. You tell me that all the nations don't know the people of Yah by what we call the curses. I will deal with that. It says an ignorant generation. I saw this kingdom mind to rise up against Yah. A mind that has been fed some of the most repulsive, rebellious activities uh, to denounce Yah. So it draws from the strength of one of the vilest uh, cesspool uh, that one can ever imagine. That's from the strength of one's own nature, their own flesh, the creature. They esteem the creature more than the creator. They are talking about the creature more than they're talking about Yah. At any time our conversation is more adapt, we are more satisfied with talking about the creature more than Yah. There is something twisted in our inward parts. It is the power of Nahash. And you will find those seven spirits that Yah hate, how they will rise up from your bosom. You will find that, Yisra'ya. But we have this attitude... That we think that Yah is going to continue <clears throat> to allow us to walk in ways that are, that, are, that are reproachable to him. And that's not going to be Yisrael. And I'm telling you that. It's not going to be. And if we think that we are going to continue in the path that we are on. And think that we are going to do that which is vile and repugnant before Yah. Then we are wrong, Israel. That is what Nahash speaks to our minds. It constantly speaks that to us, that we defy the Torah of Yah. That we will not obey and adhere to the commandments of Almighty Yah. We will not obey. We will not uh, give ourselves uh, unto the commands of Yah. And so we began to pursue those things uh, just like Chava did. And what she brought forth was death. And what we bring forth is death. There is no love for Yah. Our flesh is not impaled. We don't destroy it. We allow it to rise up. We give great esteem to our wicked ways uh, and the nature of our mind uh, that is enmity against Yah and that it despises uh, the very nature of Almighty Yahweh. Your sure is the nature of Yah. Was he a man? Uh, was he a fully man? Was he a man? He was a man. He was a man. No, he was a man. The word became, it was made. The word was made flesh. It did not say that it had a terrestrial body. It had a body of clay. It just did not see corruption. It did not stink. It did not rot in the grave. The skin worms did not begin uh, to eat on that body. And yet every kind of foul worm of hell uh, is eating on the mind of Yisrael. Because we don't have the mind of Yeshua. That mind is pure. That mind uh, pleases Yah at all things. Hallelujah. What is our tikva in the midst of all of this? No man is going to be able to buy. You can't gala. You can't even bring uh, an offering uh, to satisfy the powers that be. Uh. You can't even give unto yourself. If I break it down in a simple scenario, you can. We are not satisfied with nothing. Hell and the grave are never full. Uh. Neither is the heart of man ever satisfied. And our hearts are never satisfied with nothing. 
And so we're not going to be able to satisfy Nahash. When the power of Nahash rises up, all of your silver, your gold, it is of no value at all. They will cast it into the streets because you cannot be redeemed that way. I find where our clothing, our suits and our shoes uh, and our gold and diamond rings and watches uh, and the pearls of splendor, they will not redeem us. Uh, they will not cause your mind to give a, a great obeisance, uh, a supplication unto you. Uh, I don't care if you had a million dollars, it will not cause you to do that. I don't care what you have, it will not cause you to do that. If the power, the testimony of your shoe is not greater than that, are you allow that to be supersede when you hear the name of your shoe? It doesn't cause your knees to tremble and your heart to cross. Something is sick in us. When it doesn't cause the offering of Torah to go unto Yah to say, Look where he brought me from. Something is sick in your mind. Who he sit before the presence of Yah in his bed uh, where he has brought forth uh, and visited us. Uh, and we don't appreciate if something is sick in our mind. But when we hear the folly coming from the east, when we hear the spirit of Naha speaking from the west, we hear the spirit of Naha speaking from the south, we congregate, we gather, we laugh, and we move with animation in our bodies. We do that, Yisraya. When we hear the calls coming, and they're bringing the spirit of Naha, lies and corruption, not the strength in our bosom, not to bring about the power of the testimony of Yahshua. We buy it, we love it, we, we embrace it. And it makes no difference who it's from. Unless Yah cause his nation or bring us out of this dilemma, it's not going to be done. We believe what the components say or those that supposedly wise and spiritual. The prognosis is the prognosis is that there will be nuclear war. We've heard it from the line Hawkins, and those subject to him. We've heard it from the shallow men that have no understanding of Turan. And so if there's nuclear contamination, where are you going to get food? And Ish, his strength is based upon his nourishment. A man is made strong by his nourishment. The way he nourishes his body. If the waters are con contaminated, when you are caused the plague to fall in Misraim among that nation, when the waters became blood, were all the water's blood? Even the ones that they had drawn from their wells, it was blood. And to think that the waters or the waters uh, renewed their vigor overnight, it wasn't that way. Death and the stench of death was prevalent among that nation. And then the flies and the frogs uh, and then the death of the firstborn. The residue of that was love. It was still there, Yisrael. And the stench of death filled the land. And so it is in this hour with Nehash. So it is with some kind of powerful nuclear contamination. It makes no difference what you have stored. It shall uh, be rendered useless. It makes no difference what they have uh, two miles under the ground because of the mayhem and the ballistic power of Russia, the ballistic power of the United States, China, Pakistan, India, the line we call Israel, Britain and France uh, is enough just in America to totally annihilate the world uh, 1,000 times over to kill every form of life, to kill life, to render it to nothing. How do you know? Because uh, I look at things like that. When I say that, I read 
I want to be informative so that you will be informed. It would kill everything. And so they're saying, buy gold and silver. We buy truth, Yisrael, and sell it not. We buy wisdom and understanding and we don't sell it. By the truth of you, Yah is speaking to his nation today. And that truth is needed for you. If we continue in the Torah of Yah, we don't do an excellent job on that. If we continue in the Torah, we are his tamadim, we are his abet, his servants, his disciples indeed. He said, indeed, if you walk in the path of Torah, he said, then you shall yada. You shall experience the truth when one know, or yada the truth when one experience the truth. It is a great exuberant gladness that Yah has opened the wells of heaven and poured out treasures. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He shall make you yada. You shall be yada. You shall be free. You shall be free from the power of Nahash, from that spirit that draws you into delusion and deception that your eyes cannot see clearly, that you cannot judge yourself. When your eyes are not clearly, you don't judge yourself. When you got a beam in your eye, you don't judge you. And you judge the small infractions of Yisrael. I had one to call me and said, when I was there, since this spirit of such heaviness, I said, I don't buy a damn word you say. You liar. You think I'll let a little portly, soft belly, even his physical demeanor did not represent an ish to me. And y'all's going to allow someone like that to come and tell me, What's here? Go to hell, man. Go to hell. I don't take it back. This nation, most individuals are not used to dealing with a man. It is a fact. So when they deal with one, and, oh, okay, that's what you said. Yes, I did not mince on my word that I am. Uh, okay, my ima dafna. I did not mince on my... Could you understand me? All right then. Quite clear. Hallelujah. I'm quite sure you would not listen to one that wasn't a man, would you? Neither would you sit in here if he wasn't a man, would you? How about that? I want to proceed. Hear this, Yisrael. I want to open up our simple understanding. We must be nourished. You're not going to get this one thing that Nahash does. Uh, it destroys all the important things in our mind. Those nutritional things that make us strong, that add fat and marrow to our bones, it destroys it. And that you have no will or the presence of will to do anything. You can't even move beyond the paradigm of your mind that is brought under the captivity of Nahash. That's why a drug addict cannot move beyond that. He can't move beyond that. That's why crackhead cannot go beyond uh, that paradigm because Nahash has him. That's why you cannot, we cannot move beyond uh, the realm that we're in because of Nahash. Uh, it is a delusion of mind uh, that makes you see something uh, that you li literally do not see. Uh, and when you do something and see something, it is to reflect what's in you. Uh, and so what you do see, you examine yourself by that. Well, you see the, 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 the infraction of Yisrael, you examine yourself by that. It will reveal unto you how little and how shallow you are. Yah says, I shall cause, in the book of Juliana, Revelation. Yah says here, He says, unto the Ishwar, the woman. She is the bearer of the chamber of life. She is the one that preserved the seed. She is the one that is of the bosom of man. And out of her shall come uh, the man. Mana, man. The bread. Life bearing substance. It is amazing that that child was sucked on the titty of the ima. For many months, 
And it shall live. And it shall grow. It is the development of the child's bones and the, and the mind. And we must desire the sincere milk. That's what we must desire. The sincere milk of Yah's Torah, whereby we may grow, Yisrael. That child cannot grow. It cannot absorb through that body steak and potato. It must receive the nourishment of the Yeshua. It has to. Without that, it will become anemic and it will pine away. The child will die. And unless we desire the sincere milk, of the message of the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. When things become so turbulent and so trying, we go back to the milk. We began to drink the sincere milk. We began to drink the meal that will cause our bellies to be strengthened and our bones to begin to set fatness upon it. It is the truth. Gilyana 12, 14, Revelation. Gilyana. He said, And the Yeshua, the woman, she was given two great wings of an eagle. Now there are those that say that these are airplanes. How stupid. Just like the airlift there in Ethiopia, the Sephardic what they call the Sephardic Jews. Sephardic Jews. What a name. And those that were ad left, I recall that within 45 days they had them all out of that land of Ethiopia. You tell me they got those that they believe are Jews. Just like in this nation, you tell me you're going to identify Yisraya by some hue of their skin color. You are a damn liar. Yisraya is hid. Just like the truth of Yah is hid. Just like the mysteries of Yah are hidden. And the prince of the powers of the air do not know. And so what they seek to do by the power of Yah, because he is the great Melacha, he has given them power to spread Nahash, a man that defies Yah, a mind that blasphemes the name of Almighty Yahweh, a man, mind that speak ill against the name of Yahweh, a mind that reject Yahshua, a mind that says that he is of no value. So they have gone forth just like Herod, and just like uh, a king of uh, Misraim to kill every child, kill every man child, uh, kill them all. Uh, and yet when those like Moshe were hidden by the midwives, uh, they could not find them. Uh, just like Yoshua HaMashiach was hidden in the mystery of the word of Yah, so is Israel hidden in the mystery of the word of Yah. We shall know each other on the road of the wafering made by the power of the root him that flows from us our damn skin color is not worth a damn thing all flesh is grass grass I don't back down and to say that the nation of those of the diaspora are poor what are the blessings and the riches what do you identify with that tell me what do you identify with the riches and the blessings it is not a poor people it is an extremely wealthy people. It is an extremely wealthy people. It is an extremely wealthy people. The few that's here are the 13th largest nation in the world. Isn't that amazing? The number six twice and then the beginning. That's what he did in the beginning of this people. Six numerically is man. And yet... The 6 and 6, 12 plus 13, it gives us a new order. And the order of Yisrael is in Torah truth, Yisrael. He said, I saw this woman. She had two wings. This is not Boeing 747s. If there is cataclysmic, mayhem, we see what happened there in, in Staten Island. I don't make mockery of the misery of the people. It is nothing to mock. 
So we see what's happening in Staten Island. There are long lines for gas. They can't get enough gas on the little island. They can't ferry enough over there with the mayhem uh, that these prognosticators, these revelators of truth, uh, telling you that the bombs shall fly from Gog and Russia and China here and the bombs here. Where do you get gas? Where do you have the fuel uh, that it's going to be a Boeing 747 uh, or some massive plane? No, it's going to be the power of Yah's word. Uh, How is he going to gather Yisraya to gather again? He's going to do it. Uh, That's why the testimony is going to be so. It's going to it's going to defy every every restraints of man. It's going to defy all of the mathematics of man. All uh, of the superior what he think is superior knowledge uh, of mathematicians uh, is going to defy all that. Uh, He said that the woman will be given. He did not say that she will get in a plane or or she will get upon wings. Uh, She will be no fun. Uh, That will be the wings or the oof, uh, the oof. And I will show you what those wings are like. Uh, The oof of God, the wings of God. She will be given the wings of a great eagle. That that should be a covering. It should be a covering of strength. It should be a covering of majesty in the midst of all of the mayhem and the, and the cataclysmic opposition that they will have to face. He has his hands or a remnant of a people and the world doesn't know who that people is. He will kill us all. They have performed genocides in countries to eliminate certain classes of people. Don't you know that if Yisrael is balkanized, that is an easy thing to do. He scattered Yisrael to the Iraq. The word Iraq, it means the E-R-H-E-T, Iraq. It means the whole of the world, not just some portion or a segment of the Ulam. It means the entire spirit. Beer. To every corner of the earth, uh, he scattered the nation he puts uh, to take them uh, and scatter them like you do seeds. Yes. Yes. I'm going to do that when I get the grounds tilled up for the fall garden here in Castle Garden. Get the lime and all that down. I want a, a nice plowing of that garden. And I'm going to get 12 kinds of seeds that are all look alike. Brunswick cabbages, wheat field, red, broccoli. They all are the same Baraska family. And I'm going to get 12 of them and mix them all in my hand. And I'm going to take them and scatter them. And tell me if you will find, are we not the zero of y'all, the seed of y'all? Tell me where you're going to find a seed. And every unkind of clean bird will come for those seeds. And that's what's picking at our minds. He's going to unleash every kind of unclean and uncaged spirit. And they unleash and the ram. Because of Nahash. He said, I shall get the woman wings. The wings of a great eagle. That she may oof. That she may fly. That she may cover her strength self with the strength of Yah. Did not Yah dress the eagle? And there is no bird more magnificent than the eagle. There is no bird more magnificent, more powerful than the eagle. There is no bird more magnificent because Yah used his strength to express his strength. He did not use the sparrow. He did not use the, uh, the, the owl. He used the eagle. He shall not give us wings as a sparrow. Uh, he said, uh, and the woman were given. The word given no fun. It was bestowed. It was furnished. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she may oof. She may fly. She may flee. She must cover herself uh, in obscurity. You understand that? We are ob- obscured from the world. The world doesn't know us. Uh, he has hidden us in the power of the testimony of Yeshua. And Yisrael has hidden in that testimony. The word Ufmi, she flies with the wings. She's covered. She is obscure, ob- obscured. No one can find her, Yisrael. For what, Yah? Because of the famine, not for bread. 
It's going to be a famine to hear the voice of Yah. It's going to be a famine. And that's why collectively Yisrael Yah shall be united. I will show you how. Isn't it wonderful Yah gives us simple truth? Aren't you glad that I can label a little bit in the Torah and prepare something for us? Who likes a meal that's rushly prepared? No one. Because there's no love in that. But when one takes their time with a meal, it's because I love to cook. And if I had time, I would cook more. I do love to cook. I love the preparation and all of that. I don't mind washing the dishes. I love to cook. And I would do it more often around here. I love to work. I love to sweat. I love to labor. To alleviate something of my ach or my chod. I love to do that. She was given two wings to fly. Where? Into the mitzvah, a place whereby it's not inhabited. Is the truth of Yah inhabited by many? And that is where this woman, her mind, her being, her substance uh, shall be taken into the mitzvah. What was delivered in the mitzvah of the wilderness unto Yisrael, the Torah power, the revelation of Torah, the strength uh, of the man, the wisdom of the man, the feeding of the man, the man, the man was poured down. And in that time, the power of Yahshua, the revelation of that great power will be more than real. As we sing the song, he is real. Yes, I know he is real. In my nephesh, it's not going to be saying that way. The choruses will be great. It says into the mid bar, into, listen, this is important, not into a place, but into her place. You Baptist Zion, you have a place, and your place represents the beauty of the woman. She's going to be taken to the place of her place, of her place, not just in a place, it is her place. It is a beautiful place, it is a pacific place, and just like she is in obscurity, so shall the woman be in obscurity. She should not uh, dress herself in ways uh, that are reprehensible to her beauty and make herself out of a dime slut. She will go into the wilderness, into her place. And she is nourished. I like that. She is nourished for a time. There is no expression of time in the Hebraic, the Ugaritic, the Achaean language. Time is expressed. And the smallest measurement of time in the language of the Hebraic, it is the word moment. Time ex expressed yam, day, year. A span of time. Not like this European, this culture where we measure time in the hours. It was never that way. And I'll teach you on that one day too. That's why everything evolves around the earth. The sun, the moon. I got a hundred plus scriptures to show you how that the sun rises and everything flows around the earth. This is the center of his creation. This is the beauty. And everything is administered from here. And the sun was not made, or the earth was not made for the sun. But the sun was made for the earth. The great lights were not made that the earth, no, they were made for the earth. The earth was not made for them. He put this, and then he made the great lights, you understand? Damn the scientific mind and their lies. I've got nearly 500,000 scriptures on different aspects of things. I don't lay around and do nothing, Yisrael. You all trust me for that. Trust me. Moving quickly. And she should be nourished for a time and a time and a half of time. From what? See, from the ponim, from the face of Nahash. Whereby her mind must be nourished with truth. I will show us that, Yisrael, if you bear with me, you must. Hallelujah. This is Yas Yam. 
This is the Shabbaton. This is the Shabbat of Yah. And she shall be nourished to be made strong, to grow with vitality and strength for three and a half years or for a time at a time, and then another period of time. Hallelujah. And she shall be brought up in the strength of the truth, the Torah of Almighty Yah, whereby she shall have the very might and the wisdom and the power of Torah. Hallelujah. May I begin here in the book of Yeremiah because I want to point out the significance of one's testimony and allow Yeremiah to vouch for it. Yeremiah chapter 36 verse 4. She shall be nourished. She shall fly away. Let me, before we go there, before that, I want to give indications of this word oof. And to show us and that we may understand oof and the wings of, his, of, 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 of these wings that Yah shall, uh, shall uh, uh, north on unto his woman. Turn quickly uh, to Mishli Proverbs. Hallelujah. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 4. The wisdom of Shalom, the power of Yah's testimony, he tells us, to labor not for the asha, the riches, the wealth. Don't buy silver or gold. Buy truth. Don't labor for that. You labor for truth. Um, and Yah says, and cease from your own wisdom. We all have our own wisdom, don't we? We're all wise in our own conceit. We're all smart. We think we know everything. Uh, we want to challenge someone by our little minister. Childlike knowledge. Uh, it is no knowledge of strength because if it was, uh, you will walk erect as a man of strength. Uh, you will carry yourself as a man of strength. Uh, you will show yourself to be a man. Uh, quit you like boys uh, and show yourself to be a man. That's what you would do. But your own wisdom is not worth a nickel. It's not worth a slap of fat back and Lord to fry the fat back in. Yah says in verse 5, Will you set your eye in, eyes upon that which is nothing? Shall that be what we set our eyes upon? We shall set our eyes upon the kingdom. Set our eyes upon things that are above and not on the things on the earth. Yah said, will you set your eyes upon things that are low? Nothing of no value. It is insignificant. Proverbs, Mishkli 23, 5. He said, for riches certainly make themselves wings. Do they not do that? They fly in the Donald Trump planes. They try in the Bill Gates Boeing 747s. They fly above people. They get above them and their riches. They look down on those that are the dull or the poor or those that have no ability to combat their forces. So riches make one's wing. Yah says to Yisrael, I'm going to give you wings like the wings of an eagle. He said, and they fly or they oof away as an eagle toward the heavens. Do they not do that? Do not they fly into the heavens of Yah? Do not the riches make them wings? But Yah said, their riches make them wings. But Yah says, I'm going to grant you wings. And I'm going to give you wings that you may oof fly. You can see those planes. But Yah says they're not going to see you. They're going to look but they will not find. That's why Yahshua when they went to the, uh, the, to the, uh, to, to the grave the Sheol, to find him. He was not there. He had arisen and he was gone. When they looked for the body, they could not find him. It was only that in that body he found them. And he brought them unto the message of the power of truth. That body was hidden from their eyes. So it is with Yisrael. And the reason is hidden because we are people and we are the true nation of Yisrael. We are dead to sin. There is no will to sin. There is no life of the power of sin. In the bosom of Yisraya. So the riches cause them to fly like eagles. Uh, and they get up above the heavens. Uh, above the clouds and their arrogance. Uh, but you still can see them. 
You're not going to find Yisrael. It's going to be a time and a time and a half of a time. Three and a half years. How do you know I said it? And they fly toward the heavens uh, of almighty. Yeah, hallelujah. But yet they are not hidden, Yisrael. They are not hidden. That's why we as a nation above all things listen to me. We must subjugate ourselves, submit unto Yah's chastisement, his correction. When he speaks to us, let's rejoice uh, and say amen and hallelujah. Because you know, he's speaking to you. Uh, what man could speak with such excellence of that Nisad Dawid? His sins were terrible unto Yisrael. It was an atrocity. He speaks to us clearly here in Tehillim Psalms 90 and 8. Tehillim 90 and 8. Psalms chapter 90 verse 8. He speaks to Yah. He says, Yah, you have set our ovine, our iniquity, our ovon, the vileness of our nature before you. He has taken our iniquity and set it before him. Listen to this now. He says our olim, our secrets. We conceal things, don't we? We hide stuff, don't we? We hide our wickedness and our corruption and our vile and evil sadistic ways. We hide that, don't we, Yisra'ya? But Yah says uh, he has. It is almighty, Yah. Our secret of the sin is in the light of your countenance. Nothing is hidden from Yah. You may think that you're getting by, but nothing is hidden from Almighty Yah, Yisrael. It is in His countenance. He sees our sins and the wickedness of our actions and our activities. Hear the Torah of God. He said, for all of our days are passed away in your Ebra. For all of our days are passed away in your tremendous excess of your anger, of your arrogance, of your wrath. He said, we spend our days, as I said to us concerning the spirit of Nechaj and Hegech, in the whispering, we spend our days as a whisper, as just as a moan. And then Yah says, for the days of our years are 70 years. And it by reason of Uzzah's strength, they be 80 years or plus 10. Yet in their strength, labor and sorrow. In all of our strength, we labor in sorrow and agony. And Yah says, for it is soon cut off and we fly or oof. No man can tell you the extremities of death. Just like death has hidden secrets, so has Yah hidden his house. Yisrael. Just like death does not reveal the hidden mysteries, so it is with the house of Yisrael. We're hidden in the bosom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Now they may know Jesus. They may know the Lord God. They may know the Be'el, but they don't know Yahshua HaMashiach. We are that body. They didn't know that body. He said among them and they didn't even know who he was. He came in the midst and they did not even recognize him. When even the Talmudim, when they sat at meat, when he walked among them, he, they did not even know who he was, Yisrael. Until he opened up, until he opened up, until he opened up, until he shot, until he shot, open up, open up, open up, their minds, their understanding uh, that they may know uh. and unless the power of that testimony open us up uh, we will not know you don't know who Yisra'ya is uh, unless you know we know them by the ruach, uh, by the fruit by the peri uh, of the spirit of Yah that's how we know them uh. You're not telling me that everyone that came on a boat here and there were many that came on the slavery whose skin color was far different than yours uh. They came in ditcher, they came as slaves. 
You're not going to tell me that everyone, that every one of them were of the 12 tribes of Yisrael, and they were so, so carefully segregated that all Yehuda came here. The doctrine doesn't even carry any weight at all. And you denounce the people of the earth and say that Yisrael is only here in the Americas. You are a flat out damn liar. These individuals teach that to draw unto them parishioners and masses of people and people. And yet there is no work among them at all. And yet they will denigrate us and our labor here and reduce us as though we are a cult. That's all right. I will not allow this stupid immature generation and the immaturity of what they call themselves men to even bring a reproach upon me or us here. That doesn't bother me. I'm a man because I eat man. That's why I've always said I love being around men. I don't like boys. You got to understand what I say when I say that. Oh, I love my little friend back there. But I like men. He's a man child. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes he watches me talk at times and his little mind, he understands that. He looks at me, he's quiet. He hears it. He understands my statements. Why I'm saying that? You'll be surprised. Hallelujah. 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 There was something else I wanted to read, but I'm not going to touch on that. So it doesn't literally mean that we are going to get in a Boeing 747. We're going to be hit from the visual eyes of man. We'll be hit in obscurity. It doesn't mean that we, we're going to hide in a place and try to hide ourselves. No. For blackness shall fill the earth. It shall be a hushach. The blackness of the darkness of Nahash, that every mind will be as a, 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 a beast to akhal, to destroy and to eat up and to bring down the name of Almighty Yahweh, to destroy his Hamashiach, to raise up these anti Nahash in the minds of the people. One call me and using Lord and God and Jesus and telling me that we have a spirit of heaviness here. Man, I say, damn your God. You know how I feel about your damn God. And damn your Jesus. What were you sure? No, no. You don't even have the strength and the beauty to know that Jesus is a damn lie. You think I will buy your damn lie, man? You're stupid. Moving on. Jeremiah 36 4. Greetings to you all that have joined us this Shabbat. I know that I wasn't on live last night, but you had plenty to eat. So all you had to do was akal, to devour, to eat, to consume. The words of our Zachin Yarameyah, it was more than proficient for the delight of the palate. And so now you get few little fillings of the bones this morning. How about that? I want to vouch for one man. His name is Baruch, which simply implies blessed. Yeremiah says here in Yeremiah 36, 4, and Yeremiah, he calls this man to Hatab to write the Nabah, the prophecy, or that which he spoke by the utterance of the voice of Yah. And Yeremiah, he called upon Baruch, the son of Miriah, the one that was the lamp of Yah's light. Nira to Yah, Niriah, who was the son of Niriah, and Baruch. He did not tap or write from his own inspiration, but he wrote from the faith, from the love, from the mind. He wrote from the mouth of Yeremiah, not some book or all the dabarim, all the promises of the words of Omariah, which he had spoken to him. 
And he wrote that upon the sefer, the scroll, the document, the book that shall be sealed for our time. In essence, it is sealed that the revelation of the wisdom of that shall be revealed unto those men that Yah has placed his might in them. Not every man, not every man can carry 50 pounds. Not every man can lift 500 pounds. Not every man can, can bear up 1,000 pounds. The things I do at times, and I will say to myself, that not many men can do this, especially my age. And then I say, there are men that do things that are older than me that I can't do. And that will make me look like a boy. But when it comes to the physical applications of things, I'm no minnow in the pond when it comes to that. No. Period. And so those things I do, it is to show me what, not that I can, what I cannot do. It's only through Yeshua. We can be loving and kind and sweet. Only through him we can do all whole. The whole writing of the Torah, it is as valid then as it is now. Through Yahshua, Hamashiach, we can do all things. All that which written in the ordinance, as Kepha says, that Yahshua, all the handwriting of the ordinance, all the curses against his people, all those things. He nailed them to the stake. Do you understand? These same people will preach curse upon Yisra'ya, and yet they believe in Yoshua. All of the ordinance. I know what I'm saying, son. I'm a student. I am a student of Torah. I don't ever want to be a master. And even the master learned from the masters. And a master recognized a master. And a master understands a master of knowledge. And a master knows a boy too. Speaking. So that gives us credence unto Baruch. And I want to read from second Baruch. The book of Baruch. As Yah commands, he gives him a command concerning what shall be Yisrael. In the Acharif. Or the in or the kids, the time that has finished its course. The Akharith are the most peril of times, of the last of the times. And so the condition of his nation, Yisrael, this man that was blessed, he was blessed with the mind of Yah, with the wisdom of Yah, he was blessed to serve uh, as a secretary. Unto a mighty nobi of Yah, Yeremiah. Isn't it amazing? He did not try to exalt himself above Yeremiah, but every man today exalts himself. He wants to exalt himself against every man. I'm a man like you, then you're not worth a damn brown penny, boy. I'm a man like Yoshua Hamashiach. My desire to please Yah. I know what you know within, you are not very gifted then. If you know what I know, why are you talking to me? I don't even want to talk to you because there's nothing that you can assist me on. And then if you know what I know, you'll walk the way I walk. You'll look like me too. In second Baruch, a message, a naba, an utterance of the ruach of Yah. A naba is a, is a spirit or the spirit of Yah, the ruach of Yah, that tells, it prophesies, it instructs of the time of the things that shall be, the things shall come to pass, because it is the breath of Yah that He empowers the man to speak off of the very altar of Yah. And the words flow out of Him, not this lies or the lies uh, that we have been accustomed to in the in the vile whole houses uh, 
An example quote, Thus saith the Lord God thy God, He shall bless you with a new pair of shoes. God said that house you're trying to get, He's going to give you that house. No, Yah is not giving you a damn thing. It is the Lord. It is the financial Lord. It is the land Lord. It is the master that controls the land. Because if Yah gives you a house, He charges you no usury, man. And these bastards out of hell, they charge you. So don't tell me that's a blessing uh, from Yah. It is a deceitful lie of Nahash. It is a spirit that deludes your mind uh, that you will not trust Yah. You will not have confidence in Him. Uh, you're bound to the Lord. Uh, you are to serve Baal. Uh, you are to make your land payments, your house payments, uh, and your payments to Baal. Uh, he is your Lord. Uh, he is your master. I don't give a damn what you say. I'm free. And he never intended for Yisrael to live the way we live. Get these fakey Hebrews, they will not even get together and buy two or three houses together. The selfish pigs. And live with each other. And look after each other. These pigs will not do that. They live in a city like New York. They must catch trains to, to come to their services. They don't even have the wisdom among them to say, let us bring all this money. Sister, so, sister, so, you're moving together. We're going to save money. We're going to buy us some land. We're going to create our industry. They're not doing that because all the little gifts and offerings it takes to pay the rent and the insurance and all of that. We're free from that. You can run. I'm not running. You can be heavy down and laid and burdened down with your sin. See, I have the Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And if you're burdened down, it's your damn sins. It's your wickedness. It is your, the scripture says, it is your ovon, your iniquity that is heavy upon you. It is like a weight on your head because you're full of wickedness. You're full of evil and there is no repentance in you. You're not going to come here and tell me that we are, or oh, this community, it, that there's a heaviness here. And you ate like a hog. You were heavy when you got up from the table. Hear this, Yisra'ya, Baruch, 2 Baruch 29.7. And Yahweh answered and said, this is Yahi Amah. When Yah Amah, it is his speech of utterance. He answered Baruch and he said to me, yeah, he said, I want to show you those things which shall happen at that time. He speaks of a yam. He speaks of a year at a time, at a time, at a time and a half. He speaks of a period. He said, and it shall come upon, it shall be, it shall bear upon all or whole earth or Erech. He said, this shall come upon the whole earth, upon every nation, every country, every people that shall come. He said, therefore, all who live, uh, they will notice it. The book of Gileana tells us, uh, and it speaks unto us as to what things uh, will persist, what things will happen, uh, and what things will be carried out, Yisraeliah. And everyone will notice uh, it. It will be such a phenomenal that everyone uh, will notice it. Do you think that the masses of the world even understand uh, what a Hebrew Israelite is? Uh, when you are scattered them, they were the zero of Abraham uh, that they should be a great strength and a blessing uh, they should be the political power the power of commerce uh, in every nation Yisrael yeah. he has not taken back his Perechaya whom Yah has blessed he has Baruch no man can curse he has caused the words Ara and Chala, these ignorant beasts don't even know what it means. They don't. They're smart in their own conceit. And of course they got the young fellows hearing them and they just repeat it. And they remember. You know the fellow said to me, he said, you all were not even carrying your scriptures doing tabernacle and the Torah commands us to do that 
You know he's a stupid jackass. How many people in Yehuda, in Yisra'ya, in Yerushalayim, had the writing of a book like this? Tell me. People are so stupid. They think they're smart. They think they're wise. I said, my friend, you came to visit me. I didn't come to visit you. You came to me, then you need to be bathed and washed. I'm that brazen and bold. He said, therefore, all who live, who, hi, who have life or breath them, they shall notice it. He says, Baruch, at that time, what time? Is it Pacific here? It is. But at that time, at that moment, uh, he said, I shall only protect those uh, found in the land at that time. Time. Those that are found in the truth, those that are found in the body of Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the Erech. Is not that body. Does it not uh, encompass the entire earth, Yisrael? Are we not earthly vessels? Are we not clay vessels? And only those that are found in the truth are those that he shall protect. And it will happen that when all that which shall come to pass in these parts, uh, he is specifically relegating that uh, unto Yerushalayim in that area for the moment, uh, has been accomplished. When the spirit of uh, Yerushalayim uh, is truly the spirit of Saddam and Egypt, it is there. Yeah. That's what must be accomplished. Yeah. The filthy hands that run the government. Uh, and run the city and run the commerce and the riches. Second Baruch 29 verse 3. He said when that has shall be accomplished. That he speaks of this one that is the anointed. Not the Holy Ghost liar. He said the one that has the or the anointed one. Only then he will begin to reveal. Gala. He will begin to uncover. He will begin to reveal. He will begin to be revealed he will begin to be revealed at that time he will begin to be uncovered and you shall give us wings as an eagle and we shall oof we shall be covered and only at that time shall the anointed one not just Yahshua, but we that anointed. Because there's a reason why we're going to be anointed. We're going to be revealed. Can I show us? All right. They shall be revealed. And he says, and this one that is called the be, be, behemoth. And the word I was amazed when I began to research it. It means one. That's what the word behemoth means. One, just like you spell O N. E. He is the one. It is not many. It's just one. Ikad. One. Just like Yah is Ikad. He is one. Then this one shall be revealed. And the word one means that he is one that is invigorated with power. He has a strength of Nahash to rule in the mind, in the, in the bed of the conscience of man. And when we set our minds to one thing, nothing uh, deters that, does it? He is one of vigorness, he is one of strength, he is the one of power, he is the one of the ability to coerce and to bring the, the populate subject unto that mind. So it's forming the seed and the minds through all of the media and all the forms of the media to form that. And that's what's happening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, and this behemoth will reveal itself from its place. And this anti-Nahash spirit that we see today shall be pronounced in a powerful way and the very tenets of it, it is spoken in the truth and we will know what it is. It shall be revealed or it shall be gala, it shall be made known, it shall be uncovered. And also, he says, uh, uh, the behemoth shall be revealed itself from its place. And then it talks about Leviathan. It talks about Leviathan. 
Leviathan or this Nyahash. It talks about Leviathan. He says, and Leviathan will come from the sea. And I saw this one rise up out of the Yam, out of the torrentness of the rivers and the great masses of the people. I saw this Leviathan, this Nahash, this mind that rises up to fight here. To denounce it. I'm greater than you would then hell. You're not great, man. You're boy. I saw him rise up out of the sea. Then I saw these two monsters, the Tanith, these two powerful kingdoms. And the most two powerful things in the earth today. Can I tell you? I know I ask you questions, but I will answer you. There are only two powerful entities in the earth. And it is based upon the word we call religion and mercantile. For the commerce of the seas and the air is controlled that way. It is religion and mercantile. Commerce, buying and selling. And from that we see the sub of that. Politicians or the political inspiration. We see governments. But that is the mainstream. When Yisra'ya, when, when, when Yosef said to his brother, go back and bring your father. He was there to nourish them for two years plus five, seven years. For a time and a time and a time. And a period of time. That's what he was in, in the land of Misraim for. He was there because there was a tremendous dearth. They shall fall upon the earth. And we have, a, we have a dearth in the earth today. It's not because of bread, because we're all fat as hell. I said that way. We're greedy. We got cupcakes. We got cookies. We got, uh, we got steak to eat. Uh, but we're not dining on that which is uh, nutritional to us. Forgive me, Ema, uh, you, you elderly ones, because uh, I must take that back in that regard. All right. But what I, we, we are fat. We're greedy. We can't have enough. We can eat and we can eat and we can eat. We can stop and eat more and eat more. In the other words, we like to nibble all day. We like to eat all day. How about that? And we're not dining on the Torah of Yah. Now, I'm, not, I'm not upset because we get upset with that. Hallelujah. He says, and these two great monsters uh, which were created on the fifth day. Uh, this is what the natural man should feed off. Uh, but there is a diet for Yah's people. This is what the world feeds off, Yisrael Yah. This is what they feed off the mercantile and the religion. He said on the fifth day, we know what Yah created on the fifth day, Yisrael. He created the, 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 the wealth and the plethora of the sea and, the, and that which, uh, which abounds in the depth of the sea. Do we know everything that abounds in the depths of the sea? Do we know what's in the great river of Euphrates? We don't know what's there, but we know what shall come up out of the great, this king of darkness, out of the masses of this torrid flow of ideas and thoughts. That's what Euphrates represented as well, of the thought and the magnitude of, of what we call the dynamics uh, of knowledge uh, and such technological, te technological type of, of things. Uh, it rises about the masses. See, the babies uh, know how to run computers. The babies can write programs today. But they don't know how to praise Yah. It is right, man. Which Yah has created and which shall be kept unto that time. And they will be nourishment for all who are left. Does that imply that we will eat from Nahash or know what it shall be? Listen, the nourishment of Yah is the assurance that all is well and is in his hand. And we're going to feed on this testimony because we know that it is that time, Yisraya. We know that Yah is orchestrating this. It is not some nahash or some delusion. This is Yah, and we shall feed on the strength of that. We shall feed on the assurance of that because there's the witness in the Torah that tell us how I know that this is what this implies. Moving forth, hallelujah. Verse 4, verse uh, 5. And the earth shall also yield fruits ten thousand folds. And one vine will be a thousand branches, and one branch will produce thousands of clusters, and one cluster will produce a, a thousand grapes, and one grape will produce a core of wine. Now if all of this is there, why? God doesn't need to feed us, does he? Come on. Let us read the next two verses. And those who are, uh, who are hungry, Yah is going to witness against this wicked world. And those who are, uh, they suffer from famish, they're hungry. They will enjoy themselves. 
And they will moreover see the pala, the extreme power of Yah, the marvels of Yah. They will see the pala, the marvels of Yah. Every day. Then Yah says, as it was, as when the east winds blew in, in the midbar. He said, and the winds will go out in front of me every morning and bring fragrance that are aromatic, that are fresh. The testimony of your sure. The ruachim of Yah, the seven ruachim of Yah will bring the aromatic smell of the refreshness of your shoe, the smell, the sweet smell of his fragrance, the sweet smell that flows from Yisrael. And the clouds, so it was the cloud that was the guidance of Yisrael by day and the fire of his Torah by night. He said, and the clouds at the end of the day, and what the clouds shall do, or this cloud, this covering, this obscurity, it shall distill, it shall bring forth, it shall bring forth the uh, uh, the mape, the healing, the health uh, unto Israel. And this is the key here in verse 9. And it will happen that we're going to have the clusters of grapes and all of that. Why is this? And it shall happen at that time that the treasures of man, manna, the wisdom of man, hear this, that the treasure of manna will come down again. I like that. I'm glad that Baruch, the one blessed of Yeremiah, blessed of Niriah, the one that was a lamp of Yah's Torah, that he imparted this into Baruch. I want to read that again because it's vitally important. We must eat the man, the manna, he says, and it will happen at that time. What time is that? 12.06 a.m. No. At that time. When the world says we're going to flourish. When we're going to usurp the command of Yah's great blessings. Uh, that's what they're doing. They're breathing his air. They're taking all the substance of the earth. They're robbing and they're stealing. And Yah says at that time uh, the grapes are not going to do it. And the wine shall be polluted. He says at that time, and it will happen at that time that the treasure of man, of manna, will come down again from on high. And he said, and they will eat of it in those years because they, they, because they, they who will have arrived at the consummation or at the time of Allah, at the time of his fullness, at the time of the end, at the time of Yah's completion, we shall eat the man, we shall eat what we shall eat, the power of the testimony of Yahshua, we shall eat the refrain, yes it does mean that, it means that, listen quickly, Yakahana and John 6.33, Yeshua says in John 6.33, For the lechem, for the man, the manna of Yah is he who come down from Hashemayim and give life to the Olam Hazel. He's going to give life unto Yisrael. And then he says, And then said they to him, Yeshua, evermore, give us this bread. Yeshua says in verse 35, He said to them, I am the bread, I am the lechem. I am the man. I am the man. I am the M A N. I am the man. I am the man. I am the man. And the heavens shall distill the man. Just like the two messengers, they are men. They are not boys. They are men. One that represents the very power of the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. It's not going to be Elijah and Noach. Yah does not resurrect the dead like that. Then you're going to give credence unto uh, 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 this thing. Uh, 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 and what, what, the, what they call it? The, uh, when one dies and comes back. Incarnation. You're going to give credence unto that. And every one of y'all's holes, uh, they're closed. Oh, I know they didn't find the body of Moshe. But this is the line uh, that has been taught by the liars uh, of a damn slot. Uh, a religious Christian whore. And we bought into it. Well, she represent the power of this vivid testimony. Yahshua, Moshe, represent the very law, the Torah of Moshe. Then no man shall be excused, Yisrael. 
Well, I'm a follower of the Torah, then you have not fulfilled all. It's amazing that people will judge one and think they are so spiritual. And if they do research on the things that Yah say are Olam Viad, they're not doing maybe but one or two of them. And so they think they find something on one, he's not doing that, then they're more spiritual than them. You are jackass of a pugilant chap. You are a damn boy. Little peewee. You think you're doing something that's more superior? In hell, you don't even praise Yah. You don't even shout in the prayer. You don't even give Torah. You don't even say, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, I'm glad I'm alive. The breath of your sustain me day and night, so when I arrive. I give to the unto ya. Oh, to the ya, to the ya, yeah. To the ya, to the ya, to the ya, to the ya. I have you all up dance and sit down. Sit down. That's all right, mama. have a damn thing. I let him write me and say, this is the last one, boy. I'm not messing with you no more, you silly little boy. There was an arc that wrote me, he says, Riyak, the more I listen, I found out, find out how repugnant my ignorance are. I'm going to follow you and Yah stay in the way. I like to hear yeah. from people like that, yeah. to be honest yeah. with themselves. <laughs> and always the little boys will tell me, I know what you know. I, I, did a, a, I did it. I did a little clip for men over 55, some workouts. So this young fella, he writes me, he says, you're not doing anything I can do. I can do everything you do. And then he says, but preach, I tell you one thing. The way you did it, I can't do it that way. You inspired me to. Sure he said that. Because he doesn't want to get me in a place like that. He doesn't understand. I bust him up. Even at my age. I kill him. He couldn't hang with me. No, he couldn't. Nah. He couldn't hang with me. But at least he was honest enough to say, preach to you. You laid it out, man. Can I move a little farther? Hallelujah. Today, yeah. That's all right. I like that. At this time when it shall arrive, Yeshua says, where did I stop? Yeshua says in John 6, 35, Yeshua said to them, he said, I am the bread of life. I am the man of life. I'm the man. He says, uh, and he that comes to me, or bo, that err into me. That's what the word come me, bo. You that err into this truth, into this way. Uh, he said, you shall never hunger again. And he that believes on me shall never thirst again. There will need, be no need for the quenching. The world cannot satisfy your quencher. You will never thirst again because he's the living water. Yeah. We're going to need the nourishment of Yah because this Nahasha, it breaks down every element of our mind. It breaks down our body. It breaks down us physically, sociologically, uh, mentally. It breaks us down. And so the world tells you, you hell, you're crazy. Take these pills, uh, pop these, uh, and you'll be all right. And they'll make you more crazy. That's the truth. And you find yourself, they have you in a nut house next. Uh, Miss Ann Coulter called President Obama. She said that he was retarded. Of course, Miss Sarah Palin didn't say to him, you shouldn't use the word retard. I believe she got an affinity for Obama. She goes about with this fellow that uh, we all in the days, he was on good time. He was called, what's his name, Jimmy, or what's his name? 
Yeah, Jimmy Walker. He's about big as a barrel, fat and ugly. Mr. Obama is stealthy. He walked, he, well, he, he got his walk now. He got, he got that hood pimp walk now. Yeah. He got that boy. He knows how to struggle with And what man on the day of election is out shoot basketball? You know that's hood vitamins there. Did y'all hear me? What president is out? He's out the day of election. He's out baking. He's out baking and shaking. Mr. Romney wasn't doing that. Mr. Bush didn't do that. Mr. Clinton sure didn't do that. He's out with the hoop in his hand, bacon, with Scotty Pittman and the boys. And come on, Yisrael, that boy's bad. He's out rocking. On the day of the election, he's out rocking the the pill. In the hood, we would call the pill the basketball. In my days, we call the peel the ball. Let's, 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 that's what we call it. Let's rock a little. When someone said, let's rock, baby, you know what it was. It played some basketball. And here this man, up against the greatest challenge of his life, I told y'all he was going to win. I knew that. He is the one that the powers that be love. It is right. And so that morning of the election, he's out hooping. Mr. Commissioner of the NBA said, well, he can't really play. But other ballplayers say, he, he, he ain't bad now. He got left hand that he's pretty tough. He, now what? You tell me, Miss Merkel of Germany, uh, Amajira died there in Iran, was out playing soccer on the day of the Mr. Obama shooting the rock. I know what the Torah says about the king. I will not dishonor Mr. Bush. If he came here, no, he didn't like broccoli. We had a fried chicken. Or we would not have baked a hog for him. We laid out the grill for him. Made sure the place was clean. Do the same thing for Mr. Obama. The Torah commands that. It tells you to honor all men, Yisrael. That's what the Torah commands us. That we must honor all men. And we must do that. We must love the brotherhood and fear Yah. And he tells us to honor the Milach. Not just Yahshua, but honor the king. That's what he tells us. He commands us to do that. Hallelujah. Moving on here quickly. Yahshua said, I'm the bread of life. And he says in Yahshua 648, I am the bread of life. And then in verse 51, I want to move somewhat expeditiously. He says in Yahshua, John 651, he says, I am the living bread. Which came down from Hashem Ha'am. If a man eat this bread, he shall live Olam Viet. Yah says you're going to live. Why is he nourishing us that way? Because Nahaj has broken out all of our, our, our tools of strength. He must nourish us for one thing. I want to read it in a moment, but he must do that. He must do it, Israel. He said, when you eat this power, this testimony, you shall live forever. And the bread that I will give you is my body. He did not say terrestrial. He said, my flesh, my bazaar, my body, I lay it down. For your God, Lord, shall redeem you. That's what he said. You can say what you want to. He says, my body, it's my body. And this world is trying to make it something uh, that is not, it is his body. He said, lay it down. And if I lay it down, uh, I'm neighbor to pick it up again. We lay down our bodies by the power of the same rock. We're going to pick it up. We got to get in the heart out of us. There's a reason for that nourishment, sure it is. Let me read this. He's that living bread and his flesh. He said, well, I give for you, which I give for the life, for the strength, for the life of the old lamb. Does that mean that that life doesn't mean for the trees and all everything? Yes, it means for everything. For it is the Ruach of Yah that gives life. For Yah is Ruach. 
So he gave his life for life, for the witness of Yah to maintain, for his strength or the life of his testimony. The great works at the time of consummation shall abide in Yisraya. That's what he did, Yisraya. Why is he doing that for us? We must be nourished. Nahash has broken us down. We're feeble. We're not strong. We're weak and we don't even know how to say I'm strong. We are dull, we are poor, and we don't even know how to say, uh, I'm rich. We don't know how to say that because our minds have been so tainted. We have been brought down by Nahash. Everything in the world uh, is Nahash. Everything is against Yah. Everything promotes Nahash. Everything promotes everything but Yah. Why is this, y'all? Why would you do this? Why is it important for us to eat this man? Why is it important for us to eat from the loins of the man of Yah, his messenger? For one reason, here it is right here in Revelation. I'm going to read this. Revelation uh, in chapter 12 and verse 11. Yah says, uh, the only way that we overcome Nahash and they overcame him. They overcame Nahash, and the serpent said to the woman, For the serpent shall say, Where is your great one? Where is the mighty one of Yisra'ya? And, uh, and the, uh, it says, uh, And they overcame him. They overcame uh, this wicked one. They overcame Nahash. Uh, how? By the dam of Yeshua HaMashiach. He says, I give, lay down my body. I give my flesh for the life of Yisra'ya. We overcome this power by the witness of that testimony. That we eat this testimony, this bread, uh, by the blood of the Lamb uh, and by the words of their testimony. He is real. Uh, he is my might. He is my power. He is my strength. He is my assurance. Uh, and not only that uh, and they don't even love their lives unto the death uh, as he laid down his life for us uh, we laid out all things for him uh, we lay down the spirit of Nahash uh, we defy we denounce uh, we destroy that mind uh, that rises up against you that's why that's why we must, and the same man, the same matter, he came and they saw him ascend it. And the same Yahshua that you saw ascend, he shall come in the lap matter of the time of consummation. We're going to eat that bread. We're going to die on that. It's going to give us nourishment. And if you got a grape that big, it won't, it won't, it won't satisfy your ruach. We will have power, for this the blood. We were not bought with silver and gold. We're not trying to. We're not trying to collect silver gold. You get it. Man that does that has no emona. You got your pistols, your guns, your rifles. Uh, he's a fearful man. I don't fear what the world can do to me. The same ones that destroyed that body. Uh, he said three days and three nights, and it got up. Uh, hallelujah. And when he shall come, the dead in Yahshua HaMashiach shall rise first. Uh, and those that are alive and remain, uh, nothing's going to hinder the dead. They shall be caught up to meet him, and there shall they be with him uh, forevermore. So if I laid down my body, he did not pick up a sword uh, when it came time for the stake. Uh, he had the power of the testimony that shall be reserved uh, in the reservoir of his death. Uh, that it will be given on to us uh, as a nation. Uh, we will be hid uh, in this dark time. He has hid his nation. He has hidden them. Not going to be found with the perception of man. And so Yah shall bring us to the time where they shall say, Well, we know this is a mighty one. We know this is Almighty Yahweh. And yet that shall not flow from their loins. How do you know, man? Well, I will show you how I know. Don't ever, Nahash will speak lies to you. Your own mind, the devil is not my enemy, you're your worst enemy. Yisraya has always been Yisraya's worst enemy. Your sins are your worst enemies. Your lots, your mystery of your hidden damnable deeds are your enemy. Because you allow them to hide in the cauldron of your mind and they poison you with all kinds of diseases. Your mind is full of death and wickedness. Sin always brings forth death. It's finished its course, it doesn't give a damn about you. 
Your little mind doesn't give a damn about you. Can I speak this from Hoshea? I will. The book of Hoshea, Hosea. This is a word of somewhat comfort to us. This is how Yah regards his people. And we don't even see this, Yisrael. He regards us. He, he, he honors us this way. And he has us in his heart. We don't even see it. It says in the book of Hoshea, chapter 11, verse 3. He says, Yah says, I taught. I tirgah. Uh, I taught, I instructed. I taught. And Tirgal is to teach how to walk. Yavasadach is Isha must teach Binyamin how to walk. Yah says, I Tirgal, I taught Ephraim, Israel, also to go, to enter, to bow. Yah says, as with his son, he says, taking them by the arms. He's not going to leave the boy to himself to walk when he began. He's going to take his little arms and hold him that way. This is what his tirgal is, taking him by the arms. But they knew not that I Rafa I healed them. Effie, when he falls, when daddy picks him up and, and console him, soothe him, He's crying, ah, he doesn't know that daddy has healed him. He doesn't know that his, his avat has healed him. We don't know that. Heal us from what? From all of this nahash. This is Yas Rafa. Did he not send forth his dabarim, his word, to heal Yisra'ah? So he's sending it forth to heal us. Of all of our wicked ways, our idolatrous activities, uh, that we promote this most damnable, despicable spirit of Nahash in us, Yisrael. It is an enemy of Yah. Your mind is an enemy of Yah. That's what we must allow the mind of Yeshua to dwell in us. Uh, and it brings pleasure, hafetz. Uh, it pleases Yah in all of his activities. Uh, our minds do not please Yah. Our ways are not his ways. Never have thoughts like his thoughts. We need to think like him. Act like him and walk like him. Hallelujah. We must. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah says, I, Moshiach, I drew. In essence, I had to lead them along or grab them by the arm when they will fall. Get up, boy. Come on. And pull them along the way I, Moshiach, them. With cords of a man. With cords of an ish. With the strength of an ish. That's why the enemy reduce us down to little boys. Ain't nothing more powerful than a man. He's the prima donna of Yah's creation. And so Nahash, just like it made Chava delusional, she fed her husband that. And he became of that same Nahash, and what they produced was death. They produced death, and it is the nature of man, Ebal, the death, or the, the, the Ru'ak of the righteousness that bring the offerings of Yah, or you have the, the Ru'ak of Ka'an. And there's always a battle there. And so you must bring the offerings that are pure and beautiful before Yah, the offerings of praise, of Torah. You're going to have to stop clamping down your filthy lips. You use them for everything. You use them to lie, to cheat, to, 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 to be a backbiter, to gossip, and you can't use them to praise Yah. You are a fat out damn hypocrite. You use them to, 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 to peer into everybody's business and to, and to want to know about every damn thing that's not concerning you. And yet you don't use them to, uh, to, to lift up Yad that he will cleanse you by the dam of Yahshua. You are a damn uh, wicked child of hell and I don't give a damn who you are. We give our bodies for everything but unto the reverence of Yah. We give it unto Nahash that the lies that Nahash, uh, the spoon from our minds uh, and the ignorance of our minds. You can see it in our look and our eyes. Uh, you can see it uh, in, in our protocol with each other. Something uh, is wrong in your mind. Yeah. 
You enter into the presence of the wicked with your teeth shown and everything. Uh, Y'all told us to enter into the house uh, with praises and toda. But you come into the midst of the wicked. I don't give a damn what they're doing. Uh, your teeth are my long swah, smile at every damn thing. Uh, hallelujah. As the old preachers would say, you better hear me. They will not say, you better hear me. You better have me. You better have me. That the way they say to mama? All right, you better have me. You better have me. God said, I drew them with the cord of a man. He said, and with a booth bands of love. He did not say a band, did he? Does it say bands, a booth? That he banded us, he banded us. It was bands. It's one thing about a band, you can stretch far as you can go, but it draw you right back. His truth doesn't draw us back. His great kindness doesn't draw us back. His mercy doesn't draw us back. His tenderness doesn't draw us back. Because it is not harsh that draws us away. It is not harsh, it is our own minds. It is the reputed, uh, vile nature of our own mind that pulls us away from Yah Yisrael. Yah. He said, with bands of love. And Yah says, and I was with them, that they... He says, and I was to them as they that take off the old the yoke of their jaw. And I laid meat to them. I'm glad. We're going to understand this yoke of Yahshua is easy. And he's going to lay meat to us. He's going to rain down man. He's going to say, lift the man up, lift up the man. What is man that Yah is so mindful of him and how the enemy, even among these religious perverts, I don't care if they're Hebrews or white brews or black brews or Mexican brews. Believe me, I've heard them from, almost, from many nationalities. The Indians who will write me say, you all are not a damn Hebrew. The Mexicans have written me say, no, you got it wrong. I got a white boy that will send me his mail all the time. He say, preach, I like it, but you got it wrong. No, I got truth right, boy. You got it wrong. He said the true brews are in Asia, I mean, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Britain, uh, in America. We are the, look at the blessings we got. Uh, I say, go to hell, boy, you're ignorant. And the boy still sends me his, 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 his monthly or bi-monthly, uh, his, uh, his, his periodicals. I don't read the mess. And they all will fight. I know who the true Israelites are. Hallelujah. I know who they are. Hallelujah. They got something in them. And this is how all men shall know that you are my Talmudians. That you have love. We don't have a damn thing for each other, do we? That we have love. We think we're strong. and You know, people think that they're real spiritual. You know that song? They, they really think they got something. This is the world, you know. And when you quote the simplest of scripture, you know, catch them off guard. Like, whoa. This is how, how, how do you know that you're a friend? No greater love than this that a friend will lay down his life for a friend. That you give up everything for a friend. That's how you know you have the love of Yah. You're not looking to your way. You're looking to Yah's way, the way of Torah. You give it up. This is the world will not give up a damn thing. It's selfish, it's greedy, it's lustful, and it's wicked. Yisraya, if I was a dog of a man, I could rape this congregation at the multitude of it. Permitted certain things, I could rape you all like a pack of whores. But my heart, the heart of Yeshua, will not allow me to do that. And you know it's never been about money. Never. It's never been about money. Never been about things with me because because I could rape you all. But I know that there's an end to that. I will have to give up the ruach. And then become so hardened that you don't even care for Yisraya. Something is twisted. But you don't want to be with them. Well, you check on the ark when they're out. No, I know my brothers, my ach. I want to make sure everything is well. Call them ach. Call Zakensi. Some of you don't call them. Ach, y'all being called. See where they are. 
I don't like them coming in late. I want them to come home. Or you're checking all of your child the rule of no, check on them, man. See where my Aka. Call Shimri, man. This little boy glad to see him when he comes home. He doesn't want to hang with me, Ima. Believe me. The only way I, I said to my Aka, I said, friend, when you were sick, I pampered you. I laid you down, I fed you ginger ale. I said, what do you want? I said, I serve you, boy. Make sure you're taken care of. I look. And that was the only time that boy has ever wanted to be around me. And after that, he has broken the bands. I don't even see him now. Come on. No, sir. I said, son, I, what was that worth? What do you want, son? You want some of this? He used me. Oh, yes, sir. He wanted that. Give me that. I said, and boy, and when you get healthy, where are you? He doesn't even consider me, but that's all right. I got him. I want to move on quickly, Yisra'ya. <clears throat> and so this is Yah. He has, he, he is the one that has taken off the yoke of sin of our jaws. He is the one that has broken, and Yahshua is the one that breaks the power of Nahash. This delusion of mind that we can't see Yah. We don't know what he's doing. We know what he's doing. He's nourishing us. He's preparing us. That we lay it all down. And we're going to lay it down, Yisra'ya. We're going to lay it down. Hallelujah. But I want to give us a, a word of preference to let us know there's a great sarah, a great trial, a great fire. There's a great trouble before he brings this total restoration to restore us back unto the promises of Abraham. I will give us a little insight on that in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 30. Chapter 30, verse 11. This is also to give us some comfort and some assurance. Yah says unto us, Yeremiah chapter 30, verse 11. Yah says, for I am with you, says Yah. He says, I'm with you to your shach. Not silver or gold. I'm with you to your shach to liberate you, to save you. To deliver you, Yisra'ya, that you can walk in Teshua victoriously. I'm with you uh, to deliver you. Listen to our Abba. He said, though I make a full chala, a full end uh, of all nations, not some nations. He's going to make a full end that their commerce uh, and their power to resist uh, and their mercantile and all that will be of no value. He's going to bring them to a full in to me he said do i make a full end to all of the goyim all of the nations all nations where where all nations he did not say a few nations but all nations where i've scattered you are where i have put where i have dispersed where i've caused you to be cut up and pieces and Scattered your body that no one can find it. It is almost like a sadistic murderer that will cut every piece of a body and hide a foot here and find that there so that you find the foot you don't know what head it belongs to. You find the head you don't know the torso. You find the parts of the torso you don't find the hands. You find the hand but you can't find the foot. And that is what the word puts implies. Yeah. It is to disperse as the one cuts it into pieces and Fling it in every direction. That's what he has done to us. It was in the midst of his ibra, the arrogance of his anger of a sinful people. He hurled us and thrust us by the winds and driving. Son says his, his avat, his ima, I, I'm gone. I, I just can't stay here. I'm gone. You don't know where he is. You look, but you cannot find him. And they're looking for us, but they cannot find us. Because we're simple people. We live a life that is quiet and shalom. You're not Yisra'ya because you got dreadlocks. It's hard as hell to manage it. I know that. Many times your head stink because you don't wash it right. It is the truth. You got earrings all in your nose and your head. Hell, the hippies did that. The Rastafarians do that. Nowhere in Torah, Yah said, there will be the seal of the sign of his people. 
And yet they don't even have the peri, the fruit of the ru'ah. That which is highly esteemed among the world is an abomination to Yah. Hell, everybody wear earrings in their nose. Well, that's the sign of a marriage. It's a lie. There's nowhere in Torah where it says that. Nowhere. They came out of Mizraim. You saw what they did with the earrings and the rings and all of that. They learned that from uh, Mizraim. They were slaves to a system. And when a man had a slave, he always put an uh, angle or he bore his ear or his nose to make sure uh, that he was his servant. We're servants to sin uh, unto Nahash. And these simple minds, they buy that. You understand? Uh, Hell, Michael Jordan got an earring, but that doesn't mean that he's Yisrael. He's a wicked beast. Uh, he calls those that are down to work in the factories uh, to build his $250 damn Air Jordans. Uh, and they can't even afford them uh, and got cameras to watch them so they don't steal one pair. What a wickedness. Yeah. And he smoked $100 cigars uh, and that's the salary of a man for a month or two. And that's what we think is living and blessings. It's not living. Can I move on? He's with us to deliver us. He's going to make a full end of all nations where he has scattered us. He did not scatter us to one nation. He did not scatter us to a little island that they call a nation, Jamaica or Haiti, Dominic, Dominican Republic. What about all the little islands of the sea? What, what, what tribe is there? Dominique and all of them. What tribes in the British colonies? He said, I've scattered you. He said, Yah says, Yet will I not make a full khalaya in of you. Yah says, but he says, I'm going to Yasha, I'm going to correct you. Is he not correcting us? Yeah. He said, I'm going to correct you. I'm going to discipline you. Yasha is the discipline. I'm going to instruct you. I'm going to take a rod to your eyes. I'm going to whip the hell out of you. As many as he received, those that he loved, uh, he chastened and he corrects. Uh, and this is in line with what Yahshua, what the, what the uh, Brit Hadassah commands us. Uh, this is what Yahshua is. Uh, did he not in that body, uh, did that, that body bear all of our iniquity? And the chastisement of Yisrael was upon him? And by his stripes we are healed. We are the Rafa of Yah. I like this preaching today. I wanted to teach, but I can't teach, man. I'll leave that to Akshimri and Zakim Biramin and all them. I'll cry loud. I'll leave that to you, other Ak. You as well, my friend. Yah says, I won't leave you altogether unpunished. She said, but I will correct you, Yasha, you in measures. You, you don't beat the brains out of a child because they did something. Uh, you correct them in measures. Now, Spanky, this time, the next time, it's going to be a little tougher, boy. He said in measure. How, how merciful can that be? Just, just correct us in measure. I, I said, fool, you yeah, have hear me. I fell. I get up then. Get off your butt. I'll kick you in the butt. Get up. That's all we got to do. I don't care how we're falling. We can get up. I don't care how, how short we've come. We all fall and come short of the beauty of Yah. Hey, we don't see much of the beauty of Yahshua reflected in us. We see our attitudes, don't we? So, 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 so. Now I'm a man. Shut up, boy. Boy stroke like that. What is that, sir, we listen to around? He says, he says uh, I'm a man. Which one is that? I know a uh, Chodzakia. No. One of the little kids, he says he's a man. Talk to me. Oh, okay. So that's what we are. The little fellow that he says, he's a man. He's a boy. Not you, a user. Hallelujah. He will not let us go leave us all unpunished. He's not going to say you're pure and you're right. Well, I know my husband, he will never, my wife, she's so sweet. No, she's not sweet. Get it right, to halt. Yah says, I will not leave you all together unpunished. Not at all. I'm going to correct your measures. I'm glad. 
You know, we could not bear, you know, these individuals want to take from the book of Bereshit and say that Yah has put his nation in bondage for 800 years, 400 plus in Misraim, and now another 400. It is so stupid, that doctrine. It is stupid. And so in 2014, next year, really is supposed to be the date of culmination, and 2019. Now they say it's 2019. So they're trying to move away from that and way down. I did not say that Yoshua is coming. I did not say Yah does everything on his time. On that day, he does it. He says he's going to, uh, can I read this for us? Well, why do I ask us that I shall? I will. What? In the writing of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, listen to this in verse 46. Hallelujah. 28. He says to us, uh, he says, fear not, O Jacob. He calls him an ebbet, his servant, one that takes pleasure in him. Uh, says Yah. It is the one that, oh, nah, he is the one that spoke this. He says to Yahweh, for I am with you. If Yah be for us, if he be with us, then all the world can be against us. Yah says to him, I am with you. He says, for I will make a full end. Again, he says, I'm going to kala, I'm going to bring them down. To all the nations that go in, and he uses the word where I have driven, where I have nadak. I have driven you, I have uh, led you there, I have forced you there, I have caused you to go there, I have caused you to be banished. That's what the word nadak is. And when one is banished, how do you find someone that's banished? He said, well, I banish you. He said, but I will not make a full end of you. But I will correct you in measures. Yet will I not leave you wholly unpunished. He said, tribulations are coming. And you're going to lay down your life. Your silver and gold are not going to buy you. Your riches, your Cadillacs, your homes, and your great wealth is not going to buy you. It's not going to make you free. It's not going to save you. It's not going to be the Yosha of Yah. It's not going to be that. It's going to be by His election, His sovereign choosing. He has chosen us. He has elected us. And we're hidden in the bosom of Almighty Yah in the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. When Yahkahan was immersing Yahshua, he asked the wicked, he says, uh, you, you, you wicked, why are you coming here? You about to bring forth fruit meant for repentance, sir? Who have warned you to flee the wrath of Yah? Who have warned you? He said in the Mikdash, and they didn't even know who he was. He spoke and they did not even recognize he was the messenger of Yah. He had 5,000 following him for the great riches, uh, and they garnered from him. Uh, and when he said to him, you must eat this man. This is the man you must eat. You must eat this man. Uh, and you must drink his blood. Uh, and they were all insane behind that. Well, he said that. Yeah, I said that. Damn your Jesus Christ, your Lord, your God. They don't mean a damn thing. And don't call me talking about no Jesus. This man going to come in and tell me we're full of heaviness and he's talking about Jesus and Lord. Go to hell. Period. I'm not apologizing, Yisraya. He's not going to make a full end. Of us. Yes, Gil gives us some of the context of that in Ezekiel 11 13. He's going to judge us now. Tribulations, it is a time of great judgment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to finish this today. Let me finish. It says in Yes, Gil, Ezekiel 11 13. And it came to pass when I had Naba, when the messenger of Yah had prophesied that Peliah, the son of Benaiah, died. He said, Then fell I, or I fell down on my face, my poor name. And I cried with a kara, a loud, cold voice, and said, Ah. Oni, ah, oh, yeah, my sovereign, yeah. This is the catalyst here. Will you? He's going to judge us. And in the midst of this great agony of this 
Sarra, this fire of great trials when Nahash will be the predominant power seducing men and women to produce one thing, and I will get to that. He says, will you make a full end of the remnant, the Shabbat Rih, the Shabbat Rih, the small remnant, will you make a full end of the remnant of Yisraya? Are you going to annihilate? Are you going to eviscerate all of the house? Of Yisrael. He's going to correct us. It's going to seem as though we're lost. And Nahash will raise up that spirit. The mind. That's what we must get it right. He's going to raise up that counter. Action against Yah. If he's a great one. Why would he leave you to this? We have the testimony of Yahshua. And the dumb of Yahshua is applied. We have the power to do it. Because he trusts us. He trusts, he bought talk. Isn't it amazing that men tell you these boys, they're little boys, uh, telling you not to trust no man, uh, but yet Yah trusts us. He trusts us with the testimony of Yahshua. He trusts us with the oracles of Yah, with the sis oracles. Uh, he trusts us with the message that we will carry for. Although we have fallen, we, are, we have found dirt, uh, we have failed yet. Uh, he said, get up! Get up and dust yourself off! Uh, I made you. I made you higher than all creation. I'm mindful of you. I visit you every day. He visits you every day, son. When that breath, of, when the ruach of your calls you to get up, you get up. Even when your slumbering sleep says lie down, you get up. He visits us every day. He is ruach. He is life. And without that ruach, you have no life. There is nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing that is that agonizing that when he calls that breath to flow, that you don't rise up until the year. There's nothing. Nothing too hard for Yahweh. Oh, there is nothing too hard. Too hard for Yah, oh misery, pains, trials, uh, oh tribulations come, oh there is nothing, oh Yisraya, too hard, too hard for Yah, nothing, ain't nothing, there's not one thing, you think Nahash is too hard for him to subdue and to break down, no sir, there's nothing too hard for him, nothing at all, hallelujah. I want to close here. You know, there's so much to this teaching. And I know I cannot satisfy us all in one setting. But I want to read this, continue in this path here from Yes Scale. In verse 14. Now this is how Yah answers the Nobi. I'm glad he answered. He's answered us all in Yeshua. We have all that we need in him. Everything we need is in the body, the truth of Yahshua HaMashiach. So Yah, he answers the Nobi whose heart is smitten with great agony. He has no other alternative, no other way to go. But unto Yah, we have to go. If we come in any other way but by the door, then we are a thief and a liar. You're not coming into the door of your own heart. It's not going to work. We must come to the door of the heart of Yahshua HaMashiach. So in all of the Nobis' great agony that he needed some consolation, the call, the voice, the thundering, the fire, as the earth quaked, he spoke unto Yeskem. And the word of Yah the Dabar came, of Yah came to me. He spoke, saying, I'm uh, to utter to speak with preciseness and clarity. He addresses him as man, or bin adhum, son of man. He says, man, bin adhum. He says, your ach, your brothers. 
even your ach, the men of the kindred, he says, and call of the whole Bayad Yisraya, or the house of Yisraya, holy. W H O L L Y. The complete house. All of them. Are they that house to whom the inhabitants of of Yerushalayim said, who are the inhabitants uh, of Yerushalayim? Uh, are they the true seed of Yah? Is this coming from the throne of Yah? Have none the inhabitants of Yerushalayim, uh, the place where the Shalom of Yah is taught? Uh, he said, are not the inhabitants of uh, Yerushalayim? Uh, have they not said to you, uh, through their false Torah practices, uh, through their false immolation uh, of submitting or submission of, uh, submissiveness unto Yah, have they not said to you, uh, get you rahach, get you far, get away from Yah. To us is this land given in possession. Uh, isn't that what you're hearing today? Well, we are the ones that have the oracles of Yah. Get you far from Yah. Go to Jesus. Uh, go to the Lord God. Uh, that's what they're saying. Yerushalayim represents the city of Yerushalayim. And also, there's a metaphor, a figurative action to that. It represents the place where the shalom of Yah is administered. And that's why we gather in the city of Yerushalayim. We gather in the mind. We gather in that place because we know that from Yerushalayim that only the true those of Yisrael Yah, that shokha, that worship Yah, we must do it in Yerushalayim. Even the more of them. I know we're here, but we must do it in the heart of Yerushalayim. What does that imply? That when we gather together, there's shalom. You don't gather in the feast days of Yah to want to debate and show what you know. You gather to enjoy the bundle. That's what tabernacle is. To enjoy the food, the fellowship, the singing, the dancing. And the only thing that really should be done is the reading of the Torah. No expression, just the reading of the Torah. Just read the Torah. That's it, Yisrael. Just read it. Just read it. Just have an oracle that just read with a beautiful voice. I don't have that. I just read the Torah. And our minds just reverberate the, the blessings of Yah. And so I gather with him. We shout, oh, brother, you know, my ark. Ah, yeah, isn't he wonderful? Yeah. That's what it should be about. Yeah. Go on, little boys. So those that have possessed Yerushalayim, they say, we want you to get far. Remove yourself from Yah. Get you far from Yah. That's what they said. And that's what these teachings today, that's what Nahash says. You don't need Yah. There's a reason behind that. And I hope next week Yah's will. I really want to teach on the tribe of Dan. Because it is important to understand what shall rise up out of that nation of people. And the only way you're going to understand that, you must go to the better sheets of all things. And I know I can't do it in a one part teaching just to give you a balance or a knowledge of that. And many people ask the question, I know my Achmikhaya, he's there, he's going to probably write me, please go on that one. And so, Yah's will of his pleasure, I want to teach on that and get back to this. No man is going to be able to buy or sell. You're not going to be able to redeem yourself. You're not going to be able to redeem your children. It is a beastly thing that men say they love their sons and their daughters and they don't give a damn about truth. They walk wickedly. And the spirit of Nahash in them persuade their wives and their children to do things that they know are absolutely wrong. And they do it. And same thing with the wife. And that's the truth. The beauty of your daughters of Tizan, keep your homes, stay in your houses, shut your damn mouths. You don't run in and out of anyone's house. You don't go in and you don't congregate in sisters' houses and the husband is not home. You stay in your own damn house. I'm not taking that back. You don't be a busybody running from house to house. That's an unclean spirit. Now that's just a fact. Now don't make me teach on that and show you that. 
That is just the truth. You part in your own damn house. You are the keeper of your house. There's always something to do. Stay in your house. Quit running from house to house. And that's a fact. She has no business just congregating in this sister's house and waiting in this man. No, she might sit in the swing and you talk. Go home. You know how I know it's wrong? I can teach on it. Don't make me do that. But the world does it. Don't they do that in the hood? Don't the trailer park trash do that? Oh, I can talk about the hood, but I can talk about the trailer park trash too. How about that? And always trying to go over scripture, you're not living a damn thing. Eh? But what is living the power of that scripture? You will see the woman that is the virtuous woman. Uh, she's the woman of great beauty. And all the men compliment her. She doesn't want to, how you doing? Uh, a yabarak, she doesn't do that. She minds her damn business. What if that husband got up and he left his drawers there? What if that was an engagement between him and his wife? You, you don't do that. I don't go in no man's house. I 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 don't congregate in any man's house. I don't congregate in any man's house. I don't congregate in any man's house. Never have. Even when I was in the world, I didn't do that. The boys, we may meet somewhere. Oh, Fred and I, different ball game. He was alive, I still go in his house. Hey, Fred. Come on out here. We see, when Fred was here, I didn't go in his house. Only when he got sick when Fred was here, I didn't go in Aunt Fred's house. I go in no man's house. I go in no man's house. Shimri there, I don't go in his house. I go in no man's house. I go in no man's house. Why? Because that's honor. What if there's some personal items of his wife there? You don't do that. Stay in your house, woman. Abide in your house. A loud woman, her feet are swift. She goes from house to house and talking. See, I can talk like this in total because uh, this is what refines me all the time. How about that? Let me move on. And I will rebuke her if she did that. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Therefore says Yah, this says the master Yahweh. Although, look what he has done. Yes, scale 11, 16. Although I have cast them far off among the heathens of the Goem. And although they are puts, they are scattered abroad, they are dispersed. He says, I have scattered them among the is that country or countries? So everything here in this portion of the world will call the Americas. A-M-E-R-C-I-C-A-U-S. Americas. Not America. It is called the Americas. That is what Jamaicans call Haiti. It is called the Americas. That is what South America is called. That is what North America is called the Americas. So he did not say I scattered them into one country. He said I scattered them into the countries or the Erica. I scattered them into the countries. I scattered them into the countries, them among the countries. Uh, but look what he has for us. He said, yet, yet, even though we're scattered, that's why we can worship Yah and keep the more damn of Yah, even in a wicked America. And that's why although we keep it in America, we keep it in Jerusalem. Why? He said, Yah says, yet, yet. When it's all said and done. As old folks say, yet. When it's all said and done, baby. It's still the same. He said, yet. I will be to them as a neot, a little uh, mitash. I will be to my people like a little sanctuary. It's few scattered there. But in me, I will be to them. In the power of Yahshua Hamashiach. He said, I will be like a little mikdash. 
You are hope that is agonizing and struggling through much. He said, I'll be like a little sanctuary to you. You that are scattered in the countries of the earth, that may never hear this. He is like a little sanctuary to you. He said, I'll be like a little, little tabernacle. I like that. Hallelujah. Come on in the midst of all of our fire. He's going to be like a, a little mikrash. In all of our agony and pain, he said, I'm going to be like a little mikdash. In all of the agonizing trial, uh, he says, uh, I'll be like a little one for you. A little mikdash. Is that all right? I can stop right there, man. That's enough right there. Hallelujah. I need to stop right there. Oh, folks, I feel that. Matter of fact, there's much more to this. I'm going to stop right there. He says, I'm going to be like a little mikdash. I need to read all this, but that's all right. I get to. It's one thing I know I can get it all in one teaching, one preaching. Not 10, not 20, not 10,000, not a million. I can get it done. And I can try to. He's going to be like a little mikdash. So you can go to the, his heart and cry. And be well, all of the agony and the pain. You can go there and get relief from Nahash, a minor spirit that makes you reject Yisraya. Because there is one of the most prominent traits of Nahash. I'll teach that. Yas will maybe next Shabbat, if I don't teach on the top of Dan, I will show you. I will show you the very nature of Nahash. And what rises up out of Nahash. Are you using that because it's a Hebrew word? No, I'm using it because uh, it is the power of an entity that wars here in our land. May Yah's riches rest upon you. Yeah. Greetings to you all, my Aka Charles out there in L.A. The lost angel too. That's what it is. They're bizarre out there in lost angel. I greet you, my Ak. Those who gather with you, the Ak. Those that are gathered with you, my Ak Charles, I had someone to call uh, a, a Ak. He sounded as though he was of the, his, of the Spanish or the Mexican origin. And I tried calling. I was going to give you his, send you his number. But when I tried to call, I left a message. I haven't had a call from the Ak. He wanted to know how to come and fellowship with you all there in California. Hallelujah. It's one of the states where we have more visits to our website than any state. And all in that Los Angeles, that central Los Angeles. They're all there. And very seldom hear from them. Don't hear from any. That and New York. The city of New York. Dallas, Texas. Houston, Texas. And Dallas, Houston. Yeah. And so Atlanta, Georgia. A tremendous amount of people come. Uh, and those other places. I surprise you, but Washington State and Oregon, they... There are people on the web with sites up about, yeah, they get no visits, believe me. We're averaging nearly almost 800 people every day that come to our site. That's a lot of people. Sure it is. Because they're going to either love me or they're going to hate me. There ain't no middle ground with me. There's no middle ground with me. You're going to love me or you're going to despise me. You're going to embrace me or you're going to show me what you know. And then I will tell you, shut your mouth. I'm not going to fall subject to these little weak boys today. Man calls me, tells me that he helped this, con this, this, this congregation grow. I said, we don't need that. I said, Yah adds daily unto his assembly such as we should. Well, I've started congregation. I said, how many? Well, I've started, I said, which one? I started once. How many people are 33? I said, well, why are you not there? Well, I had to move from there to take care of this. I said, well, why haven't you started one there? Well, I got to pay my child support. I, said, yeah, but you start, I know how to motivate and all that. Isn't that something? I mean, the cat doesn't even look healthy. Huh? If anyone, I want somebody to look like a, 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 like, like a drill sergeant dress. You're right, you cover down. Boom, 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 boom. 40 inches all around. 40 inches dress. you right and cover down. Mm, mm. Forty inches all around your land. 
Yola, 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 yola. I was a soldier, boy. I was just ignorant, but I was a soldier. I was tough. And I didn't let any boy outdo me. The boys from Canada, you think I'm going to let you outdo me, boy? New York City, you, you think I'm a bumpkin anyway? And I would take all of their money. I would take all their money. They couldn't dress as fly as I dress. I was fly, had money, and I loaned money. And take all their money. And look at old, look at old brother Rob, that's right. I'm fly. I want you to know it. You're a country bumpkin. I know I am. I got your money. How much you want to borrow? Can I borrow 50, 100 back? That's worse than the mafia, isn't it? If I like you 50, that's all right. Don't worry about it. You'll sip. We're straight, baby. I got you. If I didn't like it, no, 100, 100 back. 100 back. Can I borrow 200 bread rhymes? Sure you can. Sure. And I had to remember all this. You couldn't write it down because you wrote it down. And they came and they did inspection. And they said, oh, oh, he's selling drugs or something. No, I had to remember it all. I, I, I came down, he owed me two. I gave him two, I won't fall back. That's the way I want. You sip 50, that's straight. I ain't worried about that. You keep that. But Robert, I need some money. Let, let me borrow $100. Come on, Zig. Come on, baby. I'll pay you back. No, man, we're straight. You can pay me back. TK, bro, Rob. I say this. I don't say to be both. I, I, I would gamble. I was a gambler. I love gambling, especially shooting crap. Dice, couldn't nobody beat me in that. Nobody. Only one fella, an old Michael. He was a Geechee from, from Charleston. So he was slick as me. I say, Michael, look home, boy. I'm from North Carolina. You're from South Carolina. When you and I play, we play straight up. We don't get slick with each other because he was slicker than ice on a minus 20 degree day. He was slicker than me. He was the only fella slicker than me. And I could never beat him. Straight up, we just fall at what it falls for. But trying to outslick him, I was in trouble. I was in trouble. But everyone else, look at him. I was in the military, even the sergeants, they will look for me when they get paid, let's pay poker. Back then, $20, $50 a hand, back in the 70s, a lot of money, wasn't it? They would look for me, because they knew I kept a lot of money, kept a pocket full of money, and I was fly. Yeah, I was fly too. And they knew that. And so when I went places, people would look like, ooh, look at that, and I was fly. Sure I was. So all of the fellas that from New York, and Detroit, and Philly, thought they were slick and thought they had something. I showed them what kind of bumpkins they were. And they were bumpkins, too. They were. To me, they were. They were easy to play. Yeah, they were. Them boys from Mississippi, Alabama, you talking about some slick cats. They were from, they were cats from L.A., man. I remember there was three of them. They, were, they must have been in a little game. But they didn't like me. They, they didn't like me at all. They, they didn't like me at all. But they, they was like little juvenile kids. They hung together like little boys. They didn't like me because I talked that talk, too. Of course, I could back it up, too. I wasn't afraid of him. Yeah, Barak, you all, Yisraya. I know that's not relevant, but it's relevant. We bless you all, you that have joined us. We pray that Yah Barak has poured out his heart to you today. We're going to close here. I know I wasn't on last night. I want to talk about the election, too. This is Barak Hussein Obama. But let me say that it's, it's, it's a travesty that I can look back as a young boy. I can remember the Kennedy uh, era and Eisenhower, the white, and all of that as vaguely. But I remember the Kennedy quite well because he was a, he was a, he was a, in the community of the people of the diaspora, he was, a, he was almost like a, 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 quote, a God, unquote. The people had a great love. But I've never seen such virile content that speak against a man. I've never seen any nationality of people, if I use that expression, to just rise up and speak against any president as I've watched this nation how they speak against this man. This little fat whore in California, she writes, someone ought to assassinate Barack Hussein Obama and kill him. So they interviewed her and said, you want someone to kill him? She said, well, it wouldn't bother me at all if they did that. She, she didn't say it like that. She said, someone ought to assassinate the nigger, kill the nigger. And I got friends, I'm not racist, I got, you know, that's what people say. I got friends that are, are black and white, People don't even know what racism is. It's the power to indenture, to control the minds, the substance of a people that you have, you have committed to a sub-superiority complex or people that is subpar to you. Hell, it has nothing to do with you hating a white man or a black man. 
has the power to control the destiny of a people. And I've never seen this. I've never seen the people of the diaspora. And I don't vote damn voting. I've never seen them do Mr. Bush like that. I've never seen them write or say things against Mr. Reagan. I have never seen that. And they have vilified this man. Let me, I, I want to read this before I close. I had put, I had, let me read this. And these are people that say they love their God. I was saying to Akabin, there are two phrases that are spoken today in the English vernacular. They're saying that our tradition, well, hell, your tradition had people on the bondage. It was a hellacious type gathering at the University of Mississippi. They're bellowing, get that nigger out of office, that black coon nigger monkey. We are the South. And so if you notice all the states they call blue states uh, or red states, uh, it's, where the, it's where not the Republicrats, but the repulsive crats, these vile repulsive crats, they went. The Wyomings, the Idaho's, uh, North Dakota, and South Dakota, where the population, the people of any kind uh, of balkanizing uh, or any kind of color, they don't live in those states, the Utahs. You understand? And yet they say that people voted for Obama because of the color of his skin. Hell, white people have been doing that uh, for the longest. I watched clips on the Tea Party, and one says he's a nigger. He's a niggerette. That's how he said it. I said, Look at this old damn white fool. I'm not taking it back. He said he's a nigger. He's a nigger. He does a nigger doesn't have the mind of a white man. Well, I don't want the damn white man's mind. And don't think that that is not real today. It is. So all the red states went to, you tell me they didn't vote for him because he was, he was white, Mr. Romney? He doesn't give a damn about them. And these are supposed to be the conservative Christians that Mr. Romney wears a pair of drawers. He wears them all the time as a damn Mormon, huh? They didn't even allow people of any color in their little whorehouses uh, until 1974. And I remember as a young man, these damn fools in Charlotte, uh, I'll never forget her name was Miss Martha. She became a damn woman. I said, this you silly woman. Uh, you stupid Miss Martha McAfee. Hope she hears this. Come down here. She became a damn woman. And so they vote on the biases of race and color. White people have always done that. And yet because a Negro vote for Mr. Obama, well, they voted because uh, he, he's, he's black. Huh? We have white people do it all the time. Why don't you say white people? You don't hear that because the media is controlled uh, by a contingency of, uh, a contingency of people that, 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 that puts out. And I'm not protecting Mr. Obama. Hell, he, who can I protect him against? I'm just saying you're the corruption of a wicked society. And the things that they're saying against this man, his wife, no Negro did that to Mr. Bush. Nobody did that to Clinton, a dog of a hoe he was. Nobody did that to the Bush before. Nobody did Ronald Reagan like that. It's right to do right. The Torah says this, we should do tough unto all men. As much we have opportunity to do right by all men. So Mr. Obama, he was raised by white parents, so he know how to play the white folks. You say what you want to. Come on, the man has no identity. He has a white mother and a black father. He has no identity. Hell, he says, uh, I want to get his book. I want to get the audio of it. How among the white kids, they would, they would mock him and all that. And the black kids in order to take him. And so eventually he just had to go. He had to creep in the hood there in Chicago and get down on the court. And it's one thing about Negroes, if you can bounce that ball. That's what he did. He just bounced the ball, baby. I remember when I was a member of the Y. That was a white boy. He was cool. I liked that white boy. I liked He was a baller. He played for UNLV. But I was a member. I mean, we had ball players there. Huh? I'm 225, 30 pounds, strong as a bull. I'm playing six, seven, six, eight, and I'm, I, I'm holding them down. You hear me? Quick jump shot. And this white boy was bad. This white boy could show enough hoop it up. There's a lot of white boys that could play, but that white boy was a baller. I used to just like to watch him play, man. Come on. I come in and see his name. Oh, man, he's David. He was coming. David. He was cool, too. Cool as a cucumber. I remember one day we were sitting there. He said, you know what, Dave? He said, you know what? He said, man, you know what? He said, I want to play ball. And I've always liked playing ball. And my father was a wealthy man. We had money. He said, we had money. He said, I was taking Taekwondo. He said, when I was... 17, 18 years. He's I was tough. 
And he was, I saw him back three of the baddest guys down the wild one day. He said, come on, let's, let's walk, baby. Let's play. Let, let, let's roll. He said, uh, he said that, he said, I want to play ball. He said, I the white boys can play ball, man. He said, there was a park in New York called Frazier Park. He said, I'm not lying, I was the only white boy there. He said, there was no other white boy there. He said, I went there. And he said, when them brothers saw I could ball the way I could ball, he said, that was my inroad. Never had nobody, never threatened. He said, I was the only white boy that I was the only white boy. No other. That's how he said it. He said, I went there to learn how to hone my skills. And that white boy, I've seen him back then, come on, in the 80s, come down like a LeBron J and just, just go pump it. Boom! That's the way we played. And he thump it down like a bomb. Boom! I've never seen the attitude against a man like this man. Let me read this and I'm closing. He's going to take the country down. Hell, if he takes it down, y'all guided him to take it down. You didn't have a damn thing anyway. You're going to raise taxes so high, you stupid people. We have a legislative, a judicial, and executive branch of your damn government. He's just going to execute the officer and execute tax rate. You're so silly. If he raised taxes because the House, Mr. Barner, and all of them say we, we do it in a slack way. I say, how are they going to raise, how is he going to raise taxes so high? He's going to raise your taxes 50%. That's so damn stupid. People are stupid. And when the roads begin to crumble, where all the problems out there get the road fixed? We lead too much on government while he create no, no, create no jobs. Well, if we lead it on government, why you want him to create jobs? So the duplicity of this stupid America is stupid. I listen to people, they use the word tradition and they use the word values. What values do you have? A damn corrupt mind? I said the other day, I said, watch those two words. You see them always creeping up. Tradition. I heard Mr. Riley say yesterday that the white, this is a white Christian value society. The white men run it. Nobody says anything when a white man says that. But me as a matter of the diaspora, then I'm racist. Or you should say that. No, like hell, I'm going to say that. I'm going to bring it up. Because I know our children are going to be pressed against that. And I'm not going to hide that from them. I'm not going to hide it from them. You can say what you want to. I'm not going to hide it. And so that they are just, you know, I read what well, I didn't read. I don't read that stuff. It says, Mr. Obama crushed the super PACs. You know how much money we spent in this election? Six billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Six billion dollars. Romney and Obama spent a billion. Romney, over six, nearly 60% six of his money came from super PAC. Only 11% of the money of Obama. I looked at an article this morning. I didn't read it. Mr. Obama said, I have a mandate. I'm going to raise taxes on the rich. These rich bastards are so greedy. You, you think that, you know, people, you, let me show the stupid, stupidity of the mind. These oligarchs, they don't give a damn about poor white people no more than they give a damn about poor. To them, they're useless eaters. You think they can't think about these trailer park folks or the folks that go out and vote for them? Let's get real. They don't give a damn about them. No more they care about a Negro or Hispanic. They don't give a damn about them. And so they feed their, the stupidity of their minds and they buy it. They buy it. Mr. Romney is a wealthy man. He has a quarter of a billion dollars. And rich people want to make more money. And they don't mind paying, they say, if I can make 100 million, I don't mind paying 30 million tax because I made 70 million. Then I make another 100 million. That's how they think. And they don't look at it that way. They look at making a penny. And the pennies add up to nickels and the nickels to dimes, dimes to quarters, quarters to dollar bills, dollars to fives, and five days, on, on and on to millions. That's how they look at it. And if they think that this wicked mind of Nahash is not going to be aggressive by trying to make money, they're so stupid. They are stupid. They are stupid. But I've never seen such virile content against a man. Damn, Mr. Obama. But I know he is the king of this land. And if he came here, I would honor him as I said to us, as Mr. Bush would come. I will not dishonor him. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Obama. You want to shoot a little ball? I'll tell you what, Brother Abner, he'll, 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 he'll burn you up now. He's a full quarter, and he, you, you got to stay on him. Now, you can't come up in here with that talk because he's going to bust you down out there. Ab, come and play him. Show him. Run him. And then we're going to feed him and make sure the place is pretty. Get some flowers out here. Come on. Zuck, can you fix that dining hall and take that man, man, paint? Come on, man. Oh, better me. Go buy some wax, man. Wax it till it shine, till he can see his face when he comes in here. You're going to do him right. I would do any king like that. It's honor. Let me read these few verses and we're going to close. I want you to, it says in Proverbs 24, 21. My son, Yare, fear Yah. It says, fear Yah and the Melach, and the king. And the king. Then not Daiweed Shaul was the king, wasn't he? He was wicked, but he didn't dishonor him. And these damn filthy Christians, he says, um, Fear Yah and the Melach. And he says, Do not arrive, do not meddle with that which is not given to your child. Mr. Obama, he knows what he's doing. Don't meddle with that. These ignorant people are trying to meddle in things they don't even know. They're trying to meddle. He tried to take all, our, all the money from the rich and distribute it, and you're poor as hell. It's so stupid. It's almost embarrassing when you hear that and look at it. You just tell the ignorant. He tried to make it a socialist country. Well, Miss Palin up there in Alaska is a socialist state. Everybody enjoy. If you move to Alaska, you're there six months to become a citizen of that state. You enjoy the revenue of the gas there. And I don't care all your, if you've got 20 youngers, everybody gets a check. That's why the Bruners went there. That's why the Kurt Higbys went to Alaska. Because everybody gets a check. And you do the check. This, they, everybody gets a check in January. And the check is around. I don't care if you got 20 babies. Every child gets a check. And the check, and the, each check average now, last year when I looked, it was about $6,800. So everybody get that and once a year. Hell, you spend that much in pan, you're just trying to heat yourself in Alaska. All that goes back to the gas companies. It's going to take that to heat your house. It's cold up there, honey. That ain't no money. Huh? But there are those that move there just for that. They know once a year there'll be a windfall, a little money. Is that socialist? Sure, everybody shares. That's what a nation should be, a social nation. It should socialize, help everyone, help the down, the poor, those that, that, that come on, help the wine head on the street, help those that don't have the ability to, come on, the mentally, the, the, the mentally deficient, come on, you, bring, you, you make nice places for them and let them live a, a simple, peaceful life. These greedy bastards. Mr. Obama is not going to raise the taxes, whereby you're going to be broke. No, it's going to be the rich that's going to break every last one of you. I do not campaign for no one, Mr. Obama, no one, but the attitude of this nation against that man is violently wicked. And these are the damn Christians that voted for a damn Mormon, all right? Yeah, Mr. Obama say fags be fags and marry, and the damn repulsive crats say fags be faggots undercover, and we'll be faggot men and nobody know. Oh, they caught me. I was sent to Yabi, Mississippi, Petraeus, and went over there and burnt the babies uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, and this haggard looking wife he got then, uh, he, he resigned from the CIA yesterday because uh, he's having a relationship with a young woman. I say these moral parameters uh, of what is morality, a fat bastard like Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, a racist pig, that's what they are. Spew these lies and they, and they pollute the spirit of Nahasha, the poor whites. The, that's all they are, poor ignorant whites. And they cause them to rise up and the poor whites don't realize that, that their dilemma is just like the poor black man. They're too damn dumb to see it. You're talking politics. Yeah, that's what the power of Yah is. We overcome it quickly. It says in Proverbs 29, 14, the king that faithfully, see, judged the poor. Well, Obama thinks he's faithfully judging the poor. He says, health care, Medicare, that's what he's doing. That's what it says now. The king that faithfully judged the poor, the dull, the weak, those that are afflicted, those that are helpless, those can't get insurance, those that are fearful of their health, his throne shall be established forever. So if he faithfully judged the poor, his throne is going to be established. If he deals with the poor, if you, the way you deal with the poor is how you deal with the, I don't care who you are, I don't care what kind of king you are. Mr. Bush, he, he, he all, you know these heathens cannot give me one policy that Bush implemented 
I can tell you too, and they and they they probably can't tell you. No child left behind, which was a damn disaster. And then the other one is he didn't raise the taxes on the rich. Lower the tax rate. And it caused what they call the middle class. See how they balkanize people? You middle class, you black class, you white class, you Jew class, you Arabic class. That's what they do. No, women shouldn't get abortions, what they need to do. If they did what Yah commanded them, if they stayed under the head, the authority of the man, they, they wouldn't be getting raped the way they're getting raped. How they shaking their ass and dressing like a, something that is crazy. What do you expect? So the man who faithfully judged the poor, his throne should be established forever. Proverbs 21.1. It says that the melech, the king's heart, is in the hand, the Yah, the strength of Yah. As the rivers of water, Yah turns it wherever he desires. Whatever pleases Yah, he's going to turn Mr. Obama's heart there. He is the king. He established the kings. And he breaks down. It wasn't their vote. It's the corrupt nation. And the powers that be, they're wiser than the poor people of the earth. You know why? Because they needed this. They needed a man of a different hue, color of skin. Because the white man, say what you want to, is not racism. It's just the damn truth. His image is so repulsive in all the world. He is despised. He is hated. He's a damn robber. He's a damn thief. He has brought down. He has destroyed many nations. And so Mr. Obama was this kind of carryover for the powers that be. See, man, let's change image. Let's, we got to get some money out of Africa. We got to go to that continent and rob and steal. That's just the truth. And we can't be afraid to say that. And I'm not afraid to say it. We are Yisrael. And your skin color doesn't mean a damn thing to Yah. You can't be a white man or a black man. We can't be afraid to deal with the sins and the corruption of this wicked nation. You read the newspaper, that's all you, you, all you hear are the pundits. The pundits. Who are the pundits? They're all white men. They fill the airway. Can I show you an example before I close? This little Mr. McCain, Mr. John, uh, what's his name, McCain, that was an adulterous bastard on his wife, that the woman, that he was a flirtatious bastard, there in Philadelphia, they had one of the members of the new Black Panther Party. You could see the little clip. It was about 40 seconds. The man, everyone that came to that said he was very kind and very sweet. Most of the time, those people that think like that, they want to project an image that they are they're, they're sovereign and, they, and, they are, and they're people of peace. He was, they said he was opening the door for the people. He was there as a poll watcher. That's all he was at to make sure. So Mr. McCain, Hannity had him on, uh, and this is what Cain said. Well, uh, you know, when, the, when, when white people see uh, hit this, this, uh, this bludgering nose Negro, uh, say when white people, white people are afraid to go to, the, uh, to vote when they see a black man. I go, well, hell, that wasn't the white people voting there. They just wanted to watch and make sure that, come on. And so Mr. Hannity, you know, this racist pig, he agreed with it. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So it's always that. It's always a, it's always a demarcation. And we can't allow that, Yisrael. Get the damn whiteness out of you. Get the damn blackness out of you. We're Yisrael. Get that trash out of you. Hallelujah. And these are the lies that are purported. And these are the ones that are constantly, the Rosh Nimbos, the Riley. They're the ones that pawn this filth out. I've never seen, I've never seen it from the hood, from the people of the color, no president. I've never seen it with Reagan, nobody. Never. I've never seen them dismantle, destroy, uh, bastardize a man the way that they have bastardized this man. The filling tweeters, twitters and all that, this nigga killed the nigga. America's gone down. This damn bastard, what's his name? Um, uh, Ted Nugent. He said, all the pimps, the whores, the prostitute, and welfare brats, they voted for Obama. That's how, that's how these bastards are. Mr. O'Reilly said the other day that the people that voted for him, they're all looking for something. They want to take something. And these rich white bastards, I'm going to say it. They are the ones that are getting all the welfare. You know what? You, come on, we're such a damn stupid people. You know how much the system of welfare, what it costs this 
Uh, what is it is assessed to the GDP of this the government? But you know how much it is? It's two percent. Two damn percent. A few hundred billion dollars. Two damn percent. And they spend damn near thirty percent on weapons. And then the welfare system of the, of the farmers and, and all these corporations, hell, they, they take a lot of money. And the welfare, what they call welfare brats, hell, it's only 2%. That ain't no money. Everybody's not trying. I remember that's one of my issues when I first got married. It was hard. I did this, and I tell you, I'm not ashamed to say it. I was ashamed then. I went and got some food stamps. I was so ashamed when I did that, I kept being in line. I promise, as Mahalaya would say, I promise the Lord, the God, and everyone said, I will never in my life do this again. I don't care if we go hungry. And I know exactly how much they gave us. Do you remember? How much? No, it's more than that. As a matter of fact, they were going to give us back then $96 a month if we wanted it. Huh? And I was so ashamed that I did that. I was ashamed, and I never, I was ashamed. I was, and when I went there, I saw, I had just begun to walk in, a, in the simple truth. I saw this person that was a preacher, and he was there getting well. I said, oh, what a shame. I was so ashamed when I saw, I'll never forget his name was Cleveland. Not you, Cleveland. His name was Cleveland. And I will never forget when I saw him, my shameness was amplified. And I never went back. Never did I do that again. There are those out there that need that kind of help. We have a system that has caused the bodies of the people to be broken down. The greedy white beasts, the rich bastards. And they don't have faith. And they need those tools to help them. And then this callous heart, heart. I read the article in the Observer last week, the, 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 the doctors, now listen, from North Carolina, Obama did not win North Carolina. He did not win the electoral on North Carolina, from the electoral college. He won Florida. I was sure my wife has the results were coming in. I said, baby, I said, Obama has won this, this, and that. I said, all these what they call red states, all this going to Romney. I said, these are the only ones he needs to win. Cali, I showed her the electoral, electoral college vote. I said, Canada, I mean, California. I showed her he's going to win California, Oregon, and Washington State. He's going to win Nevada. And then if he wins Colorado, that's, you know, that's how they play on the minds. But Texas and all of that, from Missouri, all of that red, I said, you know he's going to win Illinois. That's where he, you know, he won that. And the states he won, Michigan. And I said, now this is the granddaddy here, baby. I went to bed, what, 9.30 that night, 8.30 that night. I wasn't staying up for that. I knew he was going to win. I knew that. I told you what he killed. And even that's what they're saying. Him taking uh, uh, Osama bin Laden uh, and Sunday was what rescued him. And so the partners are saying, well, uh, uh, Romney didn't lose. Why didn't he? He did lose. This is how, this is how shell shocked they are. Homeboy, in basketball, you don't have to win by 20 to win. That last buzzer you win by one, you win. Well, it was a close way, but the man won. I don't care if you, we run it 100 yards and I run it in 9.6, you run it in 9.6.2. I still got the record. It makes no difference how close you are. The only one thing, as the old proverb says, the proverb that counts are, and closeness, that's horseshoes. And closeness in the election, it didn't. I don't believe the election's anyway, you understand? And states like South Carolina, North Carolina, Missouri, he even won the first president ever, he even won the state of Virginia. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's a demographics. No, it's just you wicked liars. And the powers that be. It makes him, Mr. Reagan didn't enhance my life or, or he didn't do anything to bless it. Mr. Bush, Mr. Clinton, and certainly not Mr. Obama. I'm glad who y'all put in power. 
I bless you, Mr. Obama. I'm not going to tweet, assassinate you. And the ones that do that, they ought to go to jail. The ones that call themselves want to assassinate you, they ought to go to jail. CIA, you ought to arrest them. Even Daewee would not go against Saul. He would not do anything to hurt him. He is the king, whether you buy it or not. Well, he's not my president. No, he's the president of the United States. How about that? That's what he is. We're going to see if Ted Nugent and all of them say they were going to leave America. Let's go ahead and leave. They're not going anywhere like this because they make money here. They make money here and they're a pack of liars. Well, the message today that Mr. Obama won. And, uh, was it, what do you think of that? Uh, Mr. Obama won. Was this God's plan for him to win? No, it wasn't God's plan. But it was Almighty Yahweh's plan to tell the God of this earth that it's in my hands. Mr. Romney's son said, I want to go over there and punch Mr. Obama in the mouth. I would want to punch the president. If anything, I will humble myself. Yes, sir, Mr. Obama. How are you, sir? You are the king. I've said some harsh things. I would even tell him that. Yes, sir. I will dress up. I'll make sure you hope, make these youngest and man, we'll spend some money. Yeah, we'll. Everybody go dress up. Fix yourself up. And when he comes, we'll all be out there. I have a hook, I could draw a banner, and you got to draw it right now. Welcome, Mr. Obama. And I would. Of course, it'll be 50 cars that come in there just his, his entourage to, to protect him. It'll be at least 50 cars. They don't play now. These damn fools like they can get to him. They're not going to get to that man. It is wrong to say that. I didn't vote for him and never will. But it's still not the right for them to character such an assassinate the man and then to treat his wife like that and to do her like that. Nobody talked about it. The hands was off Miss Barbara Bush, wasn't it? Nobody touched that heifer. And then this woman, they vilify her. She's talking about health. Look at her. She got a big, she got a big tush. But she's a woman of the diaspora. And she's going to have that. She ain't pumping it with no jelly beans. Yeah, when I say jelly beans, all them lumps and stuff you got on yours, all right? Okay. She ain't probably full of jelly beans and concrete. That's just gifted. She's born with that. Not born, but born. She was born with that. Oh, Michelle, what's that Jezebel, that bull dagger? I saw a clip. I showed my issue. What's the one that the bull dagger got a talk show? Anyway. What is that? Talks, I can hear you, man. Degenerate. Yeah, that's her name. She said, I want to challenge you in push-up. I can beat you. Michelle, she can, all right, she's so, she got a beautiful smile. I like a smile. Oh, men of color, I told you, they love her, man. The damn Obama, they like Michelle. Michelle Obama. <laughs> so this heifer, she said, I want to challenge you. She said, all right. And she started pumping him out. This half I got to about 15. Michelle still pumping them push up. 20. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I said, look at this cow. <laughs> that half of she couldn't barely move. But Michelle still pumping them out. Come on, one more job like this. She got two babies. She take care of them. She gets up every morning, four in the morning, take care of herself and take care of her house. That's a woman, man. Then she got speeches. She got all that to do. And she, come on, man. She's not gonna be. She's not gonna be a size zero. She shouldn't try to be no size zero. Neither should you. Try to be no size zero. You just make yourself healthy and look well. The woman gets up, take care of youngest, and do all that. Speeches and committee meetings. Come on, yes, right, yeah. Got a husband. She's not an arrogant woman. People are right. You still do them right. If they do right, you you do right by all people. I don't care who they are. And it's wrong the way they have uh, demonized this man. I'm not going to do it. I'm taking my hands off of him. Not me. Damn his policies. I know there are things that may be implemented to help the poor. They have no other way out. That old poor mother down there, I don't care whether she's white or black, whether she's in the trailer park or whether she's in, in the hood, that needs that little bit of extra money. And we're that damn callous-hearted we don't care. 
And this damn electric, they're wicked people. These folks don't know Yah. And we hardly know him, all right? And for us to have that kind of attitude to say, for this wicked America to have that, he's going to take our country down. Well, whose country is it? Is it those who voted for him? Is it their country too? Well, they said he's going to build our country up. How stupid it is. I don't give a damn which way it goes. Put it in your shoe. As hands, everything will be all right. Put it in the hands of Yah. Everything will be all right. Put it in the Master's great hand. He will feed you bread. Put it in the hands of Yah. Everything will be. Put it in the hands of Yah. Put it in the hands of Yah. Oh, everything Hallelujah. will be all right. Let us turn toward you, Put it in Hallelujah. the hands of Yah. We appreciate all that you do, Yah. Guide us this day. Oh, Yah, keep Yisra'el from falling short. Guide us, Yah, and protect Heal your nation, O oh Yam, and we shall praise your name. We shall lift up your shoe. Hand. We told you, Yam, for this should pass. We barak you for your shoe. Hand. We shall honor your name, O oh Yah. Keep us all this Shabbat, O oh Yam. We barak you with our voices. And we cry, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amen. Yabrak Israel.